gon' listen. Let's get it. It's your boy Paul P. I serve God. I'm not God. This is just my opinion. And welcome to another episode of the Into West Show. This is actually episode number two with me and the Brody. What up, bro? What it do? JY one more. Always looking good, smelling good, and feeling good every day, all day. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. I'm feeling blessed today, too. Yeah, bro. This is actually our second show of the N2S show. Yeah. Uh, for people who don't know, uh, we just we uh, we do an N2S show now where you know we talk about a lot of the things that uh, that's going on in the streets, uh, things that's going on in our communities, uh, where we try to mainly primarily focus on those things. You know, uh, where me and a bro just kind of just go over some stuff and touch bases on a lot of things that's going on. So, uh, so yeah. But um, everybody that's here. We appreciate you all. You know, uh, what's been going on, bro? Man, out here grinding, hustling, man. And uh, you feel me? Uh, you know, hey, anybody out there need a whip, let your boy know. Let's make something happen. You know what I'm saying? I know there's people out there that's, you know, that got their daughter about to graduate high school. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, need a car for college. You know, uh, let me know. You know what I'm saying? Or your car broke down or you got an accident, let me know. Hit me up, JY one more. That's my Instagram. You feel me? Let's make it happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and you know, it's it's always good to talk about uh, certain things when it comes down to our community because we want to make sure that our community is not divided. You know, uh, uh, you know, any type of business venture or, or you know, uh, independent thing that we got going on. You know, we're gonna definitely talk about it, be about it, and speak about it. Um, one thing that I want to um, bring up too, as well, is that uh, we working on it right now. But on um, on my website, I am putting up a course for individuals who want to start their own trucking company. So it's a lot of people out there who don't understand how to start their own business, don't know what direction to go in and everything like that. Um, I'm going to say in the next three weeks to a month, there will be a course on my website, paulplockett at gmail.com, where you'll be able to go in there, take the course. And on the course, is going to show you from step one all the way to getting a truck out on the road uh what to do you know along with what insurance companies to, to to work with uh places where you could go and get a truck lease a truck finance a truck all type of things it's gonna have the whole nine you know and then if you want more information after that you can do a set up a one-on-one so um so yeah man it's a lot that's going on right now um i'm excited for it you know and um and yeah look we ain't just gonna talk about it here we're gonna be about it and it's a lot we're gonna be about you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so yeah, stay tuned when it comes down to us. See, a lot, all these other podcasts don't do this. They don't do that. They just get on the air. It's entertainment. It's fun. Hey, look at me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Beef drama, beef drama, all of that. But when it comes down to this podcast, we actually going to put back into the community. We're going to give back. We're going to do things that can help others have opportunities and be able to grow and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Business opportunities, opportunities to get a whip, you know, like the bro was just saying, opportunities to 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 learn how to start your own business, get into the trucking industry or any other business. You're going to get those type of tools here, something that you will never get on these other podcasts. So keep watching, you know, tell your friends, friends, friends to come and watch the Nothing to Some podcast. And I promise, I promise that you will want to come back again. I promise you that. But, um... But yeah, outside of that, um, one thing I wanted to bring up today too, um, we didn't bring it up the last show, but uh, uh, the podcast has hit over a hundred k. You know what I'm saying? Woo! 
Still ain't working about. and everything like that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, just hit over 100K. You know, uh, yeah, you got people out there that got millions and everything like that. But, you know, uh, it, it, it took it took about a year and eight months to get to this place. You know, just seeing from from ground zero, day one, to to, to being inside of my room and starting a, 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 the podcast. Didn't know exactly where I was going to go with it. And then doing this, uh, uh, putting together this podcast studio, doing interviews, and then bringing a bro and Amarachi. You know, you got Francis in the back, Big Don, who's not here, bringing along everybody else and us, you know, keeping it pushing and, and, and turning it into a real show. You know, um, I'm I'm very very excited and appreciative for where it's at. You know, in 100k, that's a milestone. You know, that's a milestone. You know, not not everybody reach 100k on social on, on um, YouTube. Not everybody. You know, uh, it, it's it's a lot of people. You know, uh, that's on the grind and and you know uh, um, have no idea how to even get 5,000. You know, sub. So to get to 100k, that's a big feat. I'm gonna just tell you all this. It takes a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of back breaking, sweat, nights, lonely by yourself and all of that type of work. You know, um, it takes a lot of uh, making sure that, you know, uh, you, you know, when it comes down to the shows, bringing the team together. It takes a lot of uh, going out there and and getting people to sit down for interviews. It, it, it take a it take a lot of at night just editing and putting clips and, and interviews together. It takes a lot, you know, uh, but we are here and we are thankful for everybody who tune in. Uh, and has subscribed, you know. Uh, now I wish more subscribers would watch the 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 shows when it come down to the 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 streaming, like what we doing right now, a streaming show, uh, the N2S show, and and other shows and everything like that. But I understand how the game go. You got to keep grinding and keep building. We gonna get to that place. I get that, you know. Uh, so I'm appreciative just for everybody just helping us get to that. But. Um, I do want to continue to have people join in more for the for the streams as well because it's a lot of game and, and you know, uh, uh, info that we be giving, you know, when it come down to uh, the streaming shows too, you know. So, appreciate all of you, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, anything to say about the 100K, bro? Yeah, man, I'm glad we got that 100K, man. It was a long journey, you feel me? And I just want to let the subscribers know too, don't feel, feel free to comment on anything we talking about on the podcast show. If y'all feel some type of way, hey, comment. You know what I'm saying? In the chat, let us know. You know what I'm saying? So we can read it out and we can hear your thoughts and then we can, hey, debate on that. Whatever it is. You feel me? But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's all I want to say. Definitely, definitely. Also, too, one thing that um, that's going to be the second course, but I will also be adding on the website a streaming course. Basically, a course to show people, um, um, not, not, I'm tripping, not a streaming, but basically um, helping people get monetized and grow their YouTube channel. Um, I always say any type of thing, anything that I do that I get the sauce on, I'm going to give the sauce back. I'm going to put it back into the community. I don't care what it is. If I get the sauce on anything and start to learn how to build anything, I'm going to put it back into the community because I said I built this right here for us to not just give games, but this is for all of us. You know, this is this is not just, you know, something that I built just to do or whatever. No, nah, no, nah. this is for all of us. This is why I like for as many people in our community as possible to be a part of this. You know what I'm saying? Because this is for us as a community. I want everybody to feel like this here is home when it come down to it. So everyone out there, I will have a course soon to show you how to build your channel um, and grow your channel. And, 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 and you know, hopefully you can get to 100K too. You know, so be looking out for... For that as well, you know. So, um, you know, uh, got got all that information out. I got one more special news update, and this update right here is basically for anybody out there who's looking to do interviews. Anybody out there who's looking to level up when it come down to doing interviews and, and and everything like that and growing and building. You know that you may be an actor, you may be a rapper. You may be a, a a person who just got a story from the streets, whatever. You may be any of that. I want to let everybody know. If you want to get a free no jumper interview, all you got to do is come here first. You will get paid, though, from them. All right. You know, you come here, you do the interview for free. All right. I don't care who you. Yeah, yeah you could be popping right now in the industry. Come here first for free. All right. Right after that, guaranteed, 100%, you will get a call from No Jumper, and you will get an interview, and you will get paid for it. No lies. These are facts. We have a proven timeline to show. 
our last four interviews, right after our interview, they called the same person and then they did an interview over there. We have a proven formula. You come here first for free, no matter who you are. And you go to No Jumper and you get paid. All right? So remember that. Remember that. All right? So I just wanted to make sure that I put that out so everybody know. Actors, rappers, uh, 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 social media celebrities, uh, um, people who got a story on the street. If you want to get popping, come here first. And then you're going to get that call from No Jumper. Maybe it will be Adam22. I don't know. All I know is that they will call. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to put that out there too. I mean, am I lying, bro? Uh, no, no, you're not lying at all, bro. We got the timeline to prove it. You, just like you said, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, if y'all want a free no jumper interview, <laughs> come on another some podcast. They'll get paid though. You know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? They get paid yeah, over yeah. there. Yeah, of you course. Don't, you don't gotta pay them or nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now here, now here is gonna be straight free because I'm telling you, you're gonna get that interview next, you know? And just to be real, over there, no jumper, they got, you know, almost five million subscribers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So hey, I'm I'm trying to put y'all on. I'm trying to put y'all on game. You know? You come here first, you you gonna you gotta do it for free. We ain't gonna pay nothing. I ain't gonna give a dime. That ain't happening. But I guarantee that you're gonna get a call from no jumper. Maybe that first week, maybe that second, but it's going to come. I promise you that. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is look at that, our last four, five interviews and go over there and see they last, what, couple of interviews and see it's the same people. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, if you want to get on No Jumper, call us. Come here for free, and I promise you'll get that call. You know what I'm saying? Just let people know too. We do our own thing over here at Another Sun Podcast. You know what I'm saying? What we created over here, what we do, if it's bless the mic, if it's uh uh getting a, a celebrity uh journey, uh of his come up, of his life story, we the ones that started that shit first. Us first. So anybody you see that's following, like, you know what it is, no jumper, but you know <laughs> but, but yeah, just know it came from us first. Just wanna put that out there, bro. I don't want people to get it twisted because they got a lot more subscribers, so we gotta put it out there, let them know. Yeah, I you believe the saying? people know that though, when yeah. it come down to it. When it when it when it comes down to certain things like that, you know, especially the this is the thing though too. One thing that I that I see when when something comes from somebody else's head, you're not gonna be able to emulate that in a way that it's gonna come off the way that the person who created it have done it. You know, when it come down to something like now they in there rapping in a booth and everything like that. Look, you cannot emulate it like sitting like this is something when I first built the studio that I sat back and thought about doing something like rap, rap city, the basement. You know, when it come down to bless the mic, they can't emulate that. You know, at first he had like a little booth up in there that they was going in. But that's that's trash. Yeah. That's gone. You know, now it look like they do like a little thing where they got like a mic coming down. You know, they had <laughs> Brick Baby do his little, you know, 16 up in there and everything like that. You know, uh, and that, that look garbage, too. Garbage, you know, garbage. so I mean, hey, when you try to copy over someone else, it's always going to be garbage. You had the thing that they tried to do something that, you know, was, you know, was doing here from the get go, you know, inviting the girls, you know. Uh, uh, in fact, I, I pay homage to who you pay homage, who you should pay homage to. That idea came from Fresh and Fit, you know, that we I saw them doing it. And I was like, hey, that's a good idea, you know, to bring girls here, sit at the table. You know what I'm saying? And build that. Next thing you know, we had no jumper over there calling the same <laughs> oh, yeah. company. You know what I'm saying? That we was going through getting girls to come on the show, and now they tried it out. That was trash. That shut down. <laughs> they don't do that no more. Nope. You know what I'm saying? That was trash. So now they on to something new where they copy it off of every interview, you know, that's done over here. They they do the same interview with the same individuals next, you know. So um, I'm not even going to call out the last interviews. They know the facts. All you got to do is go over there and see who they interviewed the last, what, uh, 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 two months you know and and see those same people sitting here you know doing an interview here as well so i don't need to call out those who those individuals are I, in fact i'm the one who i look i told every one of those individuals hey you know you're gonna get a call from no jumper next i told yeah, them that yeah they laughed about it they all they all they all probably you know sitting back now like hey, hey that, that, nigga was, that, that nigga was serious i know you know bunchy b laughing at it <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Like I said, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that was that was one of them. Like I said, I mean, they you know, used to go down the list of names and everything like that. But, but yeah, like I said, like I told at least the last four people, I said, you're going to get the call 
um, from 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 Adam Twenty Two and No Jumper to come over there and interview. You know, they even called ones who haven't went, like like Milk. You know, like, like I give it to him. Milk haven't went over there yet. He's got the call many times. He sat here with me and said, "Yeah, they called me, but I ain't going over there." You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, look, they watching. They, I'm pretty sure they got people right now who they sick on our channel to see the shows. I'm pretty sure. It's people right now from No Jumper that's watching. I'm sure of it. You know, they watch our every move. So it is what it is. It's all good. Hey, I always say, man, if, if, if people are paying attention and people are copying and talking about you, you're doing something right. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, yeah, yeah. you know, keep on keeping on. Hey, it's some stuff that's coming in the future that I know for a fact. They could try to copy and emulate it. They're not going to be able to because it's going to be too black for them. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, when it comes down to that, Adam could go, uh, he, could, he, could, he, could, he could go to the hood. But when it comes down to the real issues that's going on in our community and, 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 and bringing people on that really have to do with building a community, growing a community, people who have powerful positions in the community, it, what, he, what, it's no use for him to bring those people on. He don't even know how to talk to them. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I just wanted to call that situation out right there. You that's know, why I'm you have, like, Flacco sitting told, next to him. Exactly, you know, which, which you know, I mean, it is what it is when it comes down to, yeah. and, you know, he know he ain't tell, you, tell you what he talking about either. But um, at the end of the day, I, I, this ain't to talk about no no jumper. I told myself going into this year, I don't care about saying nothing about them. I just wanted to call that out and let people know, hey, if you want an interview over there, no jumper, come here for free. I just wanted to put out the truth, put out now facts. That's it, you know. But uh, we gonna leave that situation alone because we gonna let them do them copying or not and we're gonna do us at the end of the day so it is what it is man but um moving along um before i get into some topics i just want to bring something up man because this is something that i'm really noticing and this is something that is heavy in, in our in our community it, it, not just our community when it comes down to social media this is something that i'm noticing a lot and i'm like yes yeah, entertaining and everything but you can't grow from that, and we're the only community that's doing it at this type of a level. But in our community, one thing that I'm noticing is that people are choosing black trauma over black business. You get what you get. You get where I'm going with this. Where you going with it, bro? Let me tell you what I mean by people choosing black trauma over black business. Right now, the things that are popping the most on social media is black beef. Pause. Okay. <laughs> but issues when it comes down to the black community. You know, you just saw the other day, and we're going to talk about that, you know, the fight with Cam Newton. Uh, a lot of dudes, uh, you know, Cam was holding an event, and, you know, a lot of dudes ran up on him trying to jump him. You know, that went viral. Everybody talking about it. You had the beef with Shannon Sharp with just about everybody, you know. Shannon Sharp with Mace, Mike you Epps. know, Shannon Sharp with Mike Epps, you know, that went viral. Everybody was talking about that. You know, now you got a lot of the fights people talking about, you know, uh, uh, Big U versus Whack, you know, Cowboy versus Whack, you know, Break Baby versus Big U. You know what I'm saying? Paul P versus Adam 22. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> hey, if they want to do it, we could do it all day, all night. I don't think I don't I don't even get in the ring with nobody, though. Yeah, that dude ain't getting yeah, the ring. He, he wouldn't even get in the ring with Vlad. So I mean, nah, who he gonna get in the ring with? Nah, you know nah, what I'm saying? But nah, uh, nah. hey, but if he want it, we can do it. If he if he want it, we can do it all day. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> but when it come down to it, we seeing that those things go viral. Those things are being talked about. Black things that and I and I call it black trauma because those things come from black trauma. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll see other communities being entertaining and doing it but you don't see that because that's really trauma that creates those events those events don't just happen naturally and normally you know and everything like that no those events come from trauma but when it comes down to black business it's a lot of people like people who i you know uh looked up to when it came down to the industry that i'm in right now which is the trucking people like alex good energy people like the trucking guru people like that who ain't really known but these are multi-millionaires making hundreds of millions of dollars you know what i'm saying you got people like that making real bread that are never ever talked about damian jones 
You know, you got people who are in business that should be the highlight of YouTube when it comes down to our community. Because those are the individuals that can really show people how to go to the next level with building and growing in business. Because one, one thing we got to all understand, the key to growing in this world may not be what you think. When it comes down to growth, it's independence in communities, financial independence. Growing when it comes down to adding and including more businesses in the community that are owned by us, not owned by others. Because we also see when it comes down to the hood, who up in there running the business? The Asians, Koreans, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, the Indians. You know, uh, all you know, all these individuals, even Caucasians, are running the businesses in our community. You yeah. probably have one to two percent of us that's running anything in our community. Even uh, the Hispanics now in downtown LA, the alley. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah it's stuff like that. You know, yeah. you know, but but you know, I'm just saying, when it comes down to it, those are the things that should be highlighted and talked about. But the things that are highlighted and talked about the most is black trauma. And the reason why, by the, look, if everybody was out just creating entertainment and it was with all the other communities as well, it'll be, it, I'll be like, hey, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But when it's just us, when it's just us, you can go on YouTube right now. The things that you see us doing and going viral off of that have to do with division, issues, fights, drama, and all of that. What other community do you see on YouTube blowing up from all of that? Any other community you see on there? No, nah, not at all, man. No. Yeah, nah. None. Absolutely it's none. Us. It's, it's only, only us. us. Yeah. Because of black trauma. We cannot blame nobody. That's another thing. We cannot look. We in a place right now. We can't blame nobody. We can't be sitting back blaming nobody. Oh man, we we put in slavery, you know, and everything like that. I'm not saying that ain't nothing serious, but man, come on, man, get over it. We look, it's a lot of people who fought in the past for us to be in a place to where we don't gotta worry about slavery. So sitting here speaking on that is irrelevant and it make you look weak. Our focus should be, hey, as a community, let's work on coming together and building together. If we're gonna do entertainment, let's hey, let's 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 if we really want to turn this into something entertaining, hey, let's create shows behind it and everything like that to where we really we really unite it in making money from you know uh uh showing the beef and the drama and the fights and all of that because we turned it into shows. It's not real. But no, the stuff that we see out there is real. It's people that if they really see each other on the streets, it's gonna it's gonna go sideways. This is real drama, real beef, real issues, you know? So that's all I'm saying when it comes down to it. We got to get to a place to where we stop focusing on that. And guess what? That's their entertainment too, all these other communities. You know, you got little Caucasian kids, little Hispanic kids, little Middle Eastern kids. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Little Asian kids that's going on watching black people create issues with each other and cause drama. They watching it too, laughing. You know, like, oh man, I hope they kill each other. I hope they do fight. I hope one of them stab the other one in the stomach. I'm serious. I'm pretty sure that's what they be thinking. I'm pretty sure. I know it sounds dramatic, but I'm just being real right now. Can I be real for a second? Can I keep it straight 100? That's all I'm saying. I'm just trying to keep it 100 on them. I, I'm sure every community is watching when it come down to us saying, hey, kill each other. You know what I'm saying? Kill each other. Kill, kill each other. Now. I'm sure of it. So I'm just saying that, man, we in a place right now where even us as a community, we choosing black trauma over black business. And if we focus on black business, if we focus on that more, we'll then start to see us elevate. But we can't never elevate. We're not going to elevate. You think because you got, we had a black president up in there and, before, and, and you think because you see a lot of our faces in sports and, and even in entertainment that, that, that that's going to help us as a whole community elevate? No. When it comes down to a lot of these other communities, and I'm going to speak on it, like the Jewish community, we don't really know none of them You when it comes down to it. I, who, 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 how many actors we know that's fair? I think Adam Sandler is Jewish. We don't really know too many of any of them, right? It's true. But they're in the league when it comes down to out here living in the everyday world. 
They running all of the hospitals and facilities. They running the movie companies. They own the teams. They out here who really run some stuff. We already know when it come down to Caucasians what's going on with them. When we, when we talking about the, 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 the Chinese and the Asians, you got Korea town in every state. Where they, where they run everything in those cities. You know? Man, these people ain't hearing me, man. We're going to move on. Y'all y'all not ready for none of this, man. They, they not ready for none of this. At the end of the day, I'm just saying we got to get to a point where we stop focusing on black trauma. And we focus on black business. Stop being so divided. Stick together. Grow when it comes down to those type of things. Because those are the things that's going to be our early grave as black people. I'm telling you this straight up. You know, because when you see people blowing up or going viral, using this example like a Shannon Sharp, that's him. That's his money. That don't have nothing to do with us as a community. It divided a community, even though he didn't do nothing wrong. But you saw how many people went back and forth with that viral moment just off of beef. That ain't how we grow. That's how an individual make more money. But that ain't how we build and grow as a community. That's hurting us. It's not helping us. And I just wanted to call that out, man. But um, anything to say on that, bro, before we move on? Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, too, man, they probably feel like the reason why, you know, the the, the black trauma is so huge. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, I I think, you know, they probably kind of probably want to put it out there like because we came from poverty. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know how it is, like, you know what I'm saying, in the black communities, like, you know what I'm saying? We kind of just us. It's being born and raised in L.A. I mean. You know, you got to always kind of keep that little mean mug face on all the time. You know what I'm saying? To let people know, like, oh, okay, hey, I ain't no punk. Because people try to test you a lot. So people kind of raised with kind of like just being pushed around where, you know what I'm saying, they used to it. So now, yeah, people got a little fame. People, you know, got got their content going on. And they probably feel like, you know, hey, you know, they, they still keeping it like they're in the streets, you know? Because yeah. it's like, I put it like this. Like, when I, when I left out of L.A., I kind of seemed like I didn't have to watch my back no more. You know what I'm saying? But being raised in L.A., I thought that's what it was all about until I moved out of L.A. I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't the same. Everybody ain't, you know, everybody saying hi and bye. And out here, it ain't none of that. You feel me? So I think, like, most, like, in the black communities, it's kind of like how we was raised. We kind of used to just, you know what I'm saying, drama. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, being loud. You know what I'm saying? Active. And, you know what I'm saying? And fighting. And, you know what I'm saying? I mean, cussing at each other. I mean, that's kind of like they used to it. So it's hard for them to let that go. You feel me? When they get to a higher place, you know? And I feel like that's why it kind of continues, you know, the black trauma. Yeah. I mean, and, and that, and that'd be, I mean, it's never okay, but you would understand it more if you, if you saw things like that happening, but, but, but we as a people were building still in our communities where we were starting our own businesses. You know what I'm saying? We was, we was, you know, not just going out there to work an everyday job, which is nothing wrong with that. You do what you got to do, but for, for, for other people like Walmart, you know, uh, uh, the grocery stores, you know, and everything like that. No, we was actually learning and developing and starting our own businesses, becoming entrepreneurs and everything like that, you know, yeah. but that's not what's going on. So I'm just saying that we focusing more on that and not focusing on what's going to help us grow as individuals and then grow with others within the community. So, so yeah, that's where we come from. Yes, of course. You know, when it comes down to the hood, it, it, it's, it's, that's where the word ratchet come from, you know, and everything like that. I'm just saying that we're not growing and we're not focused on our growth as a community. We're more focused on uh, how can I go viral by doing some stupid. How can I go viral by going and jumping in and go over here? How can I go viral by talking about uh, somebody who's a celebrity and saying a whole bunch of crazy stuff so then people will uh, uh, make my clip blow up, you know, and everything like that. We focus on that. We not focus on how can I go out there and build my own business that I can help employ so many other people from my street from, from where I come from, and then it can make me a multi-millionaire in the midst of it. We're not focused on that. It's like you focus on, I, and I always say this, all money ain't good money. Going out there and trying to make a viral clip and everything like that to make some money on YouTube, that's not the best way to make money. Yeah. Because for one, there's no guarantee that you're going to get paid from that clip. Who knows? You may not be monetized. Who knows that YouTube may ban that clip? I don't know. I'm just saying you cannot bang everything on, hey, I'm going to get big and I'm going to make a lot of money by going and doing my own channel and doing a whole bunch of stuff to blow up on YouTube. That's stupid. No, understand and learn business. Understand and learn how to become an entrepreneur. Talk to others that surround you who you see doing it. I'm just saying we got to change up our focus because 
is if that's what we're going to focus on, you think that other communities and people are going to stop watching or tell us don't do that? No. They're going to sit back with popcorn and watch us and, and chill back and say, hey, what's the next thing they're going to do that's stupid? That's all they're going to do. So I'm just saying, man, we, we, we better start to understand that part and figure it out. Because we're going to see ourselves continue to dig a hole in a deeper and deeper and deeper hole. And, and, and we're going to be the clowns out here. Because that's the direction it's going in. We're looking like clowns. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it straight up. Paul P. going to keep it real. As a community, we we looking like clowns. Straight up. You know? So, it is what it is, man. Um, We're going to go on and move to some time. You ready for the first topic, bro? Yeah, let's go for it. All right, man, but uh, something that I I was just speaking on a little bit, you know, but we got to talk about it, you know, and, and, and watch uh, exactly what happened. But um, they just had a situation where Cam Newton, um, he was just, uh, you know, holding a event, something that he do regularly, you know, for the youth and all of that. Um, you know, he was holding an event, and during this event, it was people waiting in line and waiting around to meet Cam and everything. And um, I believe it was some coaches uh, that Cam knew are a group of individuals that walked up and then uh, it was a verbal exchange for a little bit, uh, you know, and after that verbal exchange, that one of them swung on Cam and then they all ran around and start fighting. But I can say this, Cam, we're going to see a little bit on, on it on this news club, but I can say this, Cam looked like he held his own with four or five dudes, you know. Now, do we want to see stuff like this happen? Absolutely not, you know. Uh, uh, I'm talking against all of this stuff, but... It happened, and I can say Cam held his own, you know, but Cam is like 6'5", 240, you know what I'm saying, and everything like that. Maybe about 6'6", six, six. around 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, about 230, 240. So you're going to have to bring it if you're going to try to bring Cam down. But one thing I can say, too, and we could probably kind of see it on this video, uh, uh, Cam didn't try to, like, take him out. Cam was just trying to put him in headlocks and stop it. So... Cam, you know, I got to give it to him, man. He 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 handled it the right way. And it showed that he he, he got a good head on his shoulders. Um, but I, if, if you do feel threatened, you better do what you got to do to take someone out. But he was, I could tell he wasn't looking to do that. But uh, let's go on and play the, uh, we got the uh, clip ready, Francis? All right, let's go on and play that clip. Take a look. You can see Cam Newton. Can you make him out there trying to fight off multiple men? The former NFL quarterback was taking part in an invitation-only camp and tournament when this happened over the weekend. Camp staffers and security officers eventually stepped in to break this up. It is not clear what led up to this fight, but people are investigating. Police, I should say, are investigating. He may have been outnumbered, but over on social media, people are impressed, saying, uh, Mr. Cam Newton, held his own y'all better watch out now y'all know who you running up on hey all right all right um uh, so uh brody what's your thoughts on that man you know I, I spoke a little bit on it and we just saw the video what's your thoughts on this situation with cam uh what i could say man i'm not i'm not rooting for the fighting part you feel me uh you know that shit i don't like to see you know what i'm saying where it goes viral where that's how everybody look at us but um one thing i do one, one thing I am cool about is uh, nobody didn't pull out no knives or guns. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Facts, for the most part. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Because we lost way too many lives, you know what I'm saying, in the streets with a lot of, you know, entertainers, um, artists, you know, uh, celebrities that lost their lives from knives or guns, you know what I'm saying, when there was a mix going on. So that's one thing, you know, I do respect, you know what I'm saying? Nobody pull out no weapon. But, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just, yeah, that's how I say it, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're right about that, bro. You know, uh, I I've told this story many times um, and everything like that, but, um, um, uh, you know, we was in an altercation years back, you know, um, off of Hollywood Boulevard. Okay. This was right after a show, and um, during this uh, fight, it was uh, uh, me, the bro was there. A couple of other family members, you know, was there as well. It was probably about five of us on their side. It was about five, six, maybe even seven of them. I don't, I don't really remember. Um, it, it was a gang, you know, and everything like that. But um, it was the type of fight you just saw, Cam man. Uh, it was it was just like that. It was just fists being thrown everywhere, you know. And in this fight, I was stabbed. I was stabbed a couple of times, you know. Um, and I had to go to the hospital get surgery. Thank God that I'm here, you know. Uh, I made a promise to God after that that I would never fight again. Thank God I haven't had to, you know. Of course, if I got to defend myself, I'm gonna defend myself. But I haven't had to, so thank God about that but the bro is right when he say what he said because um you never know what can happen if you got guns and knives involved yep. you know you could lose 
people around you who you love. You know, we see it all the time. When guns and knives are involved, usually someone end up badly hurt or dead. Nobody's about to walk away unscathed when a knife or a gun is pulled out. It's not going to happen. If a knife or gun is pulled out, someone about to end up badly hurt or dead. And we didn't see that there. So that's one thing that I can't say you right about, bro. Thank God that we didn't see, you know, any knives or guns, you know, uh, uh, pulled out. And we didn't hear like, oh, Cam got stabbed by one of them or somebody pulled out a gun and, and shot Cam or whatever, you know, or vice versa, you know, because maybe... On the other end, maybe it's security. Pull out a gun and shoot somebody because, you know, they jumping them, you know. Which, to be real, that would have been understood if that would have happened. He getting jumped by four or five dudes, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh -huh. So if some if, if a security guard pulled out a gun and shot one of them, I, what we all would have been saying, hey, that was on them. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't have been trying to jump them, and they trying to protect him. But you know the funny part, bro? It be the ones that's jumping the individual that pull out a gun and a knife. And it's like, bro, y'all jumping him and y'all gonna pull out a gun and a knife on him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of situations yeah. happen like that where a lot of people died, you know? Yeah, and It's yeah. like, I'm getting jumped by all these dudes and y'all put out a gun on a, a knife on me. Yeah. It's like, I'm by myself. I'm, I'm the one that should be putting out a gun or a knife. Yeah. You feel me? But, yeah. Yeah. But. I wouldn't have been surprised, though, if one of camp security guards would have pulled out a gun. Oh, no, You I know what I'm saying? Though. Not at all. You know? Yeah. It would have been expected, you know? And that's one thing that people got to understand, too, and watch out for. Like, you don't know what's coming from that situation, you know? Like, like, I, I hope that people who know them individuals, individuals are telling them how stupid they are for even attempting to jump camp because any of them could have ended up dead. You know, typically, if that happens, somebody's going to get killed. Yeah. If you got security with you, somebody's going to be taken down, you know, and these are the things that I'm talking against because we see in people in our community uh, uh, get murdered every day because of stuff like this. You know, it never fails. Every day we hear a new story about something happening because of a situation like this, and now somebody's dead. Yep. So that's why I'm speaking against it. it this isn't about, oh, you know, uh, 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 Paul P. trying to be about, you know, uh, 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 say the community, power to the people and everything like this. It have nothing to do with any of that. I am just sick and tired of seeing us fail when it comes down to black people and as a community. Yeah, you have some individuals that are building and growing, but as a community, we're losing. I'm sorry. I'm going to call it out. Some hate when I say that, but I'm going to call it out. As a community, we are losing badly. We're losing. We're losing. When you see stuff like this, I'm sorry, we're losing. You know? Go and look at, uh, uh, when it comes down to um, the U.S., go and look at the, the stats for every community um, financially. You know, who's making the most to the least? We second to the bottom when it comes down to, as a community, finances. Second to the bottom out of every race. Second to the bottom. We're not winning nothing because we're going viral on YouTube and people uh, 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 and, 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 and we're the most in sports. Yes, you know, but that's a very small faction of people. That's like 0.2% of people, if that. But because you see us mostly there doesn't mean anything. Sports, that's athleticism. Have nothing to do with your smarts and financials. So, yes, if you are gifted athletically, which that's not a lot of people. Yes, you got a chance to make it there. But what about if you're not, which is the majority? How are you going to make it? And nowadays, we think focusing on, on, on going viral is the way for us to do something and make it, which is not what it is. So when it comes down to this situation, you know, first and foremost, I just want to say thank God that Cam, you know, didn't survived. get hurt and survived. <laughs> and it wasn't nothing being pulled out. And thank God the other dudes who jumped Cam, which, hey, whatever would have happened, that would have been on y'all. But thank God nothing happened to them, too. And, and they got out of that situation where they could live to see another day. But I really do hope that somebody, not not the law, not the cops. I, I Look, no matter what, where we come from and who we are, we still don't trust uh, the legal system. So I, I'm never going to say, uh, hey, if, they, if, if, it's, if they're going to get punished, they should get punished. No, no, that's not what it's about. I hope that individuals who know them talk to them and say, hey, that was stupid. Let's try to get in touch with them so y'all can get on the phone with Kim or something. Apologize and, and come together or something. You know, that's something that we should do. The law, let's lead them out of it. I don't but I, what, know what, what why did they start? To, why did they fight? I really don't. The they really didn't go into detail. On the reason. Yeah, yeah. They really didn't go into detail on why. But Cam have had a lot of camps like this in the past. And it's weird because when Cam be having these camps, it's almost like these young dudes be disrespecting them. You know, because he had a yeah. camp in the past to where... 
they was calling him out and saying, hey, he wasn't that good of a football player in, in the NFL and everything like that, saying all kind of crazy stuff. So I don't know why. I don't I don't really don't know why. But it seemed like him be getting disrespected a lot. And I don't get it. The dude was an MVP in the NFL. The dude is 6'5", 230, very smart, got his own show, you know, made a lot of money in the, in the NFL. He have his own camp where he put a lot of young people on. I don't get why Cam get disrespected the way he do sometimes, you know? So, so yeah, it, it would depend on that. But I don't see Cam as a dude who's like a, a flagrant, faulty dude that could have done something to warrant what they did, you know? You know, sometimes people hear a little something and, and they take it to a whole nother level. So it may have been a situation like that, you know what I'm saying, where these people just took it, something little happened, and they took it to a level of let's go jump cam, you know, because they know it's going to go viral, yeah. you know. And like I was just saying, we do stuff to go viral a lot of times. So it probably was off of that. Cam probably ain't been like, what the heck is they jumping me for? You know, but he also know he Cam Newton. So it, it, it comes with the territory, you know. Sadly, you know, but uh, but yeah, I don't know why though, bro. But but you know, you know it happened, you know. So yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But uh, but man, shout out to Cam though. At the end of the day, Cam doing. I, I love what Cam is doing right now. You know, when when you see us transition from sports into doing things that require you to have a a, a good mindset, you know, and 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 in in a in a business intellect. It requires you to have those things, man. I big up those individuals. You know, and Cam, like I said, Cam now got his own podcast show that's, that's up right now. I think he got almost a million subscribers, you know, uh, uh, with the show and everything like that. Cam is doing his thing right now, you know. So I got nothing but respect for Cam, and I hope he continue to grow. You know, he didn't just stop. Cam could probably, Cam probably don't have to do nothing for the rest of his life. Cam made a lot of money in the industry, a lot as an NFL player. He probably don't got to do nothing, but he's keeping it going and keep building and grinding, keep doing his camps. And I hope this don't stop him from doing his camps because one video I saw, it looked like it was primarily young black kids that were at his camp. So, and th we need things like that. You know, people who's doing things like that, we need them. We need Cam Newton. So, so us going and taking out and trying to take out and hurt individuals that we actually need is silly and stupid, but we do need Cam. So shout out to Cam. Shout out to Cam, man. Yeah, straight up, straight up. So, all right, let's get into this next topic, man. Let's get into this next topic. So, um, um, uh, I was watching um this 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 interview with Bow Wow the other day. You know, uh, first and foremost, shout out to Art of Dialogue. I always say anybody who, um, you know, ever do an interview or anything that we watch, I'm gonna call out, um, and, and I'm gonna shout out who's the individual who did that interview. You know, um, and, and this. A uh, clip has been circulating where Bow Wow basically was speaking on his lean addiction, yeah. you know, um, up to the point to where I believe, you know, uh, what had him get get past it is it was an event that led him in a hospital, mm. you know. Um, now this clip is uh, it's about like five six minutes, but I I really think it's important that um we we listen and hear this um and i know people probably saying man a lot of these people in the industry is is addicted and everything but what i like that bow wow did is that he broke it down like he literally spoke about it from step one to step 10 on how he got the lean addiction to leading um to getting you know, uh, put in a hospital and everything like that you know and a lot of those artists are not open about speaking on it like that and it's important that the artists who go through this speak on it because if somebody just come into an interview who who used to have an addiction or, or anything like that, people ain't going to care to listen to that person. No. But this is Bow Wow. Yeah. You know, Bow Wow speak on it. You may pay attention a little bit more because we know Bow Wow was, is one of the most popular individuals that was in the industry in the last 20 oh, yeah. years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who was more popular than Bow Wow? You probably got you probably could count people on one hand in the industry, in the rap industry, who was more popular than Bow Wow in the last 20 years. Yeah. You know? I, and I'm going to say probably other than Jay-Z or Wayne, it's probably Bawa. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, let's play this clip again. Shout out to Art of Dialogue. Hope, uh, I hope that um, um, you two don't give me no strikes for playing this, man. But um, like I said, I, I want to make sure that I uh, uh, give y'all um, the information as a whole 
you know, if we're going to talk about something, rather we get a strike or not, you know, for playing a video, you know, but if I the dollar law do see this and say, who is this playing my clip? Just know we shot you out, man. You know, um, and I hope that your channel get more subscribers and your clip get more views from us doing stuff like this. But let's go on and play the clip. Speaking of Amorion, right, y'all had that album together. And I remember it was something y'all was doing on BET. And I think you went off on the guy, Tori, because I think he was trying to prank you, and you went off on him. If you don't mind me asking, <laughs> then, uh, was everything cool with you at that point when y'all was coming out with that album? I was on lean. And I was sipping so much syrup, bro. And I, I, I said this, too, like, right after right after Mac Miller had died, I, um, I spoke on that sh Like, I was... I was drinking that shit like crazy. Like if you go back and watch, it's called the Road to Platinum documentary series on BET. If you watch that, you'll notice, you'll see so many like white styrofoam cups and you'll see so many like Hawaiian pledge bottles in the studio. I was losing my fucking mind. Like that lean shit got me up. Like I was just always irritated. Just one little thing I didn't like, like when Torre said what he said about you know, and that was a joke too. Come to find out, and I was like, "What, nigga? Wait, what? Nick, what do you mean he ain't the like? I'm wrong. Come on, I'll get up. We out. All that, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> I put that shit down back then. <laughs> Before you seen all these cats doing it, like I'm telling you, like it was times where I used to put up on Wayne, like yeah, the pop bottles video in New Orleans. I think we was doing something. They was shooting. I put up on Wayne. Wayne hit me up with a, with a little baby bottle of my own. Like, take this. Go ahead. Blah, 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 take this with you. Like, we pouring up foes, deuces all day long. And of course, you know, my man, my right hand man was my hype man. He from Houston. You know what I mean? At the time, I had somebody from Ace Town running with me. So we always had the lean with us. Like, no matter where we was at, we sipping. We go to Roof Chris. Y'all want any water? Nah, we straight, we straight. Y'all got some ice? We'll take some ice, though. <laughs> like, get on with some ice. Until, I, you know, I don't have, like, an addictive personality. So I'll never forget me and Chris was, we were on our tour. I was co-headlining with Brown. It, the opening night was in Cincinnati. When I got off the stage, I collapsed. And I was like, what the f***? And I, and, and I went straight to Cincinnati University Hospital. I'm talking about my stomach was so fucked up, so fucked up that I end up going back home to Atlanta after the first show. So mind you, I miss Baltimore, I miss Chicago, and I miss Detroit. Like these is big Bow Wow markets, like huge markets. And I'm sitting in the hospital, not knowing what the fuck is going on. And when I get back home, this shit gets worse. Like I'm throwing up, I'm having, I'm, I'm fucking shivering in the bed. I'm. I'm sweating, I'm, I'm going through it. I go to the hospital again, bro. This is summertime. I pull up to the Gwinnett Hospital here in Atlanta with like two hoodies on and sweats. You know how hot it get in Atlanta? Hot as a muff, hot as sh I'm fucking freezing, bro. Like I'm like, like I'm cold as f And what happened was I didn't know that I was having withdrawals. That's how much lean we was consuming. Like, and I had on my tour bus. I had a tour bus at the time. So, you know, we not we not even paying attention. I'm not paying attention. I'm doing this. Shit. <laughs> like, you know, all the homies, we all just doing this. Shit. We be eating. I'm like, yo, tell me, stop scratching. Like, but this shit itching. Like, real lean sippers know when they see this, when they see this part, they were like, that nigga ain't capping about that shit. Hell yeah, when you a real lean sipper, that shit, like, that shit be itching. Like, like it's coming out your pores type shit. And, um, and, you know, I had to get right, man, and and you know, God rest her soul. I had the best publicist ever, Patty Webster. You know, she she ended up putting out a press release, and you know, I was home in Atlanta. I saw the news, and the rapper Bow Wow uh, was hospitalized. And da -da -da. Meanwhile, I'm at home recovering, and you know, for dehydration, well, no dehydration. I was I was up off lean early, like up. So, you know, if you look at that that article up, it said dehydration. I was cat. You know, that's just good PR. We didn't want to. Let the world know that 18, 19 year old Bow was, you know, heavy on the on the drink, but we was. We 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 was though. Wow. All right, we can stop so it right there, Francis. Really addictive. <laughs> yeah, cause it's like for me, you know, a lot of cats they pull up in the, in the soda. You know, for me, I always feel like it flattens 
Hey man, uh, f- first and foremost, son, before uh, I let you speak, bro, I just want to say shout out to Bow Wow, man, for being open and being honest, you know, because um, a lot of people ain't going to be that open and honest about the things that they battle with. And I think that's how other people go out and get help and other people speak about it when they see people that have a big platform like a Bow Wow that speak on it and be truthful, you know, because let's be real. We know probably 80 to 90 percent of the industry have yeah, addictions to certain drugs. Yep. You know, we know this, you know, uh, in fact, when it comes down to a lot of com- now, this is something that goes on in a lot of communities when it comes down to addictions, especially like, let's be real. A lot of us that come from the U.S., you know, um, because of the freedoms we have and how easy it is to find drugs. In some of these other countries, these same drugs is illegal. You could get put in jail for 10, 20, 30 years just for having it. Yeah. You know, in, in a lot of countries, you have a, 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 if you have some weed, you could get almost a life sentence. You know, so they're not playing. But here we have the freedoms to do whatever we want to do. So when somebody like Bow Wow, as popular and as famous as he is, speak on this and be truly honest. Like what he said, he said... Hey, they said dehydration. I wasn't dehydrated. You know, I was, I was fiending. You know what I'm saying? You know, like I was, I was, I was tripping. You know, I just got out the hospital and, and, and yeah, you know, I was a fiend really when it came down to it, you know, and everything like that. He was honest and, and that's big. You know what, what Bow Wow just did. But, um, what's your thoughts on, on that situation, bro? Man, I ain't gonna lie. Shout out to Bow Wow, man, for uh, putting that out there, man, and sharing that with everybody, man, because you're right, man. There's a lot of people that, that's probably out there that's going through that right now, and they need some help. And with him putting out something like that, man, it let people kind of open up to, like, knowing that they need to stop or change because they see the outcome, what it could be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, But that's another reason. I mean, because you, you're right. I mean, Lean is, man, 80, probably 80% of these rappers out here on that shit right now. The Lean, Lean, yeah. Cocaine, Pimp. And this is another reason why, bro, I'll be telling, that's why I hate when they put it out there all the time, when they try to compare a rapper to Tupac, I'll be hating that. Because I'm like, stop comparing all these rappers to Tupac when they all on Lean, they doing these drugs, all that type of stuff, but they want to say, oh, I'm the next Pac. Like, yeah, bro, yeah. that's disrespectful to me. You know what I'm saying? And it's yeah. like, and, and, and these rappers doing drugs, they losing themselves, they... They, I mean, I'm, I'm glad, like, like we hear, like, little Bow Wow, you overcoming that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just trying to say, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if they, they're, if they're easy to be influenced, you know what I'm saying? And they followers out here, then how you can't, you can't compare yourself to a leader that was a leader, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like Pac. But long story short, man, yeah, I mean, you know, shout out to Bow Wow for that, man. But um, yeah, yeah, you know, just hey, hey everybody to stay off that lean, though. Lean, cocaine, pills, all that shit. Yeah. I'm just putting it out there right now. It ain't good yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, you very, know, very dangerous. Yeah, I'd rather you drug. get rid of. I'd rather you solve your trauma through natural, like remedies. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, either working out, eating vegetables, or, 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 or plants. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they got plants and stuff like that. You know, you can eat whatever, or you know what I'm saying to get rid of your whatever it is. But just the medication, I'm just not really big on that, man. I was always afraid of medication growing up. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'd rather yeah. get rid of it naturally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and people. I mean, when it come down to all of it, man, anything that had anything that you could get addicted to, people should stay away from. It. Every uh, look, yeah. a lot of stuff is addictive. You know, uh, they don't ever talk about it too much. But um, the the thing that kills people the most is food. You know, um, being addicted to certain foods and stuff like that, and and eating it. You know, pork and 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 you know certain beefs and everything like that. You could you could die early from all of that. Diabetes, high blood pressure. You know, like we have grandfathers who then died early because of the way they eat, not because of a drug. Even though that could kill that's you true, too, and that's, that's what we're true. talking about. But food is the number one source that could kill you when it comes down to becoming highly addictive to something. You know, uh, but we're talking about lean right now and, and everything yeah. that's going on in the, in the industry. You know, uh, I, I wanted to tell people a story because I want people to understand too and these are for the individuals that they wasn't trying to get to that place they wasn't using it rec- recreational uh, recreationally but it turned into uh something that they had to wean themselves off from you know um but I want to I want to tell everybody a story of something that I've been through so after I got stabbed they prescribed me um um you know uh pills like uh Norco Ativan um a couple other pills too you know and they prescribed it to me um, for like the next six months. You know, uh, I was taking at least about four or five different pills because of all the pain that I was going through. And even though I got out the hospital and they sold me up, I was still feeling a lot of pain inside of my, my stomach because they had to literally take like um, part of my uh, intestines out and everything to like make sure that nothing, uh, nothing, none of my organs or anything was hit. 
you know, no arteries, no organs, and everything like that. So they had to make sure that everything was cool. So of course they had to put that back and in, and in, in so you know, uh, stitch it, you know, my skin back together and all of that, right? So so yeah, I was uh, I, I had pills that I was taking every day, you know. Um, and after about three months, I started noticing myself needing these pills you know not not that i was trying to you know i wasn't taking them recreational i wasn't trying to but it was like it didn't feel right when i didn't have them so just to feel normal i would i would take one you know you know it got to the point where the pain was gone but i didn't want to feel the weird feel the withdrawals and everything like that you know i didn't want to feel that you know so you know um it got to a point where i was doing it too much that i was like let me just completely stop it so that's what I did. I just completely stopped. And that was hard. You know, you go you go through that for three, four, five days. That's the hardest thing in the world to wing off of a drug by yourself, you know, because I wasn't trying to go to the hospital and ask for this or ask for that or do no rehab or anything like that. I just said, man, I'm just going to stop it. But it was the hardest thing. I was like, I'd rather been stabbed again four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times than go through that, you know. So I want people to know, too. Who may be going through it because they dealt with an injury or something like that. That don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, because I'm not saying wing off of it the way that I did. Because, hey, what if I would have, like, you know, caught a seizure or something because, you know, I wasn't supposed to get off of the drugs, get off of the pills like that. You know, what if, what if, what if I would have, you know, by not going to the hospital or, or going to a rehab, you know, to, to get help getting off of it. What if I would have caught a seizure and just died? You know, things like that can happen. So I want the people to know who are, you know, maybe trying to wing off of something and don't know how to do it to just ask for help. I know a lot of us, especially in our community, we don't like to ask for help. We don't like people to even know when we're doing stuff like that. When we have addictions, we don't want people to even know that we're dealing with an addiction. So we keep it to ourselves. We keep it on the low. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say everybody got a secret. I don't care who you are. Everybody on this planet Earth got something that they're doing that they hiding behind closed doors i don't care what it is they can be cheating i don't care what it is it's something that everybody is doing behind closed doors but i'm just saying this is one of them that i don't think people should do without letting somebody know because this is why we see a lot of people dead later and then people wonder how did that i didn't even know they was addicted to anything you know like like i mean nobody knew somebody like mac i mean maybe the industry knew but no. People on the outside knew the wire the wire, yeah, the wire nobody yeah, knew nobody that you know, know that no all. no nobody knew about mac miller you know, and everything like that. That's what I'm saying. It's a lot of people we could go down the list and name that we didn't have no idea that this person was even on it like that. A lot of people, you know. So I'm just saying people shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. That's why I think it was big. And this is why I wanted to talk about it and take the risk of even showing the Art of Dialogue clip, you know, because like I say, you're not supposed to be, you know, playing other people's material without asking them. But I thought it was that important to play it because... You don't see artists normally do this, but we should see more people do this. Don't be afraid to talk about it. To me, it's, it should not be looked at as weak. It should be looked at as weak if you keep it a secret. If you don't tell nobody, you just keep it to yourself, you know, be open. If you're dealing with it, be open. I'm not saying that that's going to make you just stop it right then and there if you be open about it, but be open to let somebody know, look, I'm dealing with something. I got to get through it, but I just want, I just want to keep it real that I'm dealing with something. And it's okay. We human. You know, we look, we look, look. We are born in sin. Nobody out here is perfect. We got to understand that. Sometimes we don't want to look weak. You know, when we need therapy, we don't go out and get it. We don't seek it. When we deal with something uh, uh, um, um, alone, we want to keep it that way. We don't want to let nobody know. And to me, that should be labeled as weak. When you can't express what you're going through. That's why I say I'm an open book. I'm going to talk about everything when it comes down to this platform. Because I want people to know who I am, where I come from, and what I've been through at the end of the day. So that's why I look at Bow Wow. To me, he's looking like one of the tallest dudes in the industry right now. Because we know it's a lot of other people going through it, but not talking about it. So, so that's big. And I hope that every platform play this clip. I hope that every platform talk about it. Because we need more to come out. And not just talk about, because we do got people nowadays opening more up about needing therapy because they're going through something mentally and, and stuff like that. We see more of that. But we need people going deeper. What are you dealing with physically when it comes down to your health that is affecting you that you're not telling nobody? But you know what? Some of the artists actually shows it. Like, you didn't see that picture NBA with young boy pulled out? That he put out with him just laying on the floor with, with all the pills. And he was like, I don't answer my phone. This is what it is. 
You know what I'm saying? You didn't see that picture, right? That went yeah, viral. yeah. He do, so he's doing it's it. like he's showing it. Yeah, but yeah. But it's like I don't understand. Like you know what I'm saying? Like uh, he knows he need help and he's showing it. But it's like what type of help? Who's trying to reach out and help him? You know? Because I looked at it like, man, somebody need to reach out and help this good this dude. He's basically telling everybody like, look, this is what I'm on every day, yeah. all day. So I think it's a lot of that too. We got to start reaching out and helping people that's actually asking for it. Yeah, a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. Reaching out is is if we know it's a good thing, you know, as well. Yeah. I'm just saying that we need to, as a community, be more open to let others know what we're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? Not not do it in a subliminal way as well, where we, hey, I want people to see what I'm, you know, because maybe he think it look hard. Maybe you know him, you know, because we in it. Like, really we that. no, no, no. I'm not saying that yeah. you're not on it. I'm saying, but we in the industry now. The industry where is that now? Is that's the cool thing taking drugs like Future, the biggest artist in the world. Every song is about drugs, you know. So uh, uh, Juice World, he was on it while talking about it in his songs. That's what killed him, you know, the drugs, you know. But it was looked at as cool. So a lot of them look at it as cool, not as hey, I got a problem. I want to let people know what I got going on. I need some help. And I'm saying more of us, the way Bow Wow just did, talking about it in a way to where hey, bro, this was not right. And this is something that people need to know. Hey, when you're going through this, you need to speak on it. He did it in that type of way. So the way he handled it and the way the NBA Young Boy was doing it is two different ways. That's the industry in. Just like in the, in the 90s. What was the main thing that was being talked about in that time? You know, uh, uh, being, a, uh, being a, uh, the, 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 the drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? I was selling this, slanging this. Da, 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 da. You get what I'm saying? That's what was popping in the 90s. Talking about stuff like that. Now we in a place where we at now is where taking the drugs is the hard thing. You know what I'm saying? You got people going on live popping pills. You know what I'm saying? I got this. Where the girls at? I got the mollies. I got the, you know, the 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 opiates. I got all of that, you know? So I'm just saying we need to get to a place where we understand. Now nah, that that ain't that ain't cool. That could kill you. And that's why a lot of you are 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 ended up ended up dead in your home and somebody finding you. You, the biggest celebrities of our time, Prince, Michael Jackson, Juice World, people like that, Whitney Houston, ended up dead because of pills and, and drugs and everything like that. So we got to start talking about this more and highlighting it instead of, oh, let it pass and now we move on to something different, you know? Yeah, because I, I was going to say, like, with Lil Bow Wow, you understand, too, like, um, he's already over. He already cured from it. So he accomplished that. So it's like it's easier, it's easier for him to talk about it and, and explain that. But it's like when somebody on a drug, bro, even though they need help, they're not going to ask for it because they don't want to stop. Well, no, I know that. So yeah. it's like it's up to somebody else to just reach out to them and just be on a tip like, look, I'm going to help you through this. We're going to get you out of it. That's not, bro, that's not going to always happen. Is that, that, that's but, the thing. nobody themselves is going to get rid of Most people, no, that's, that's why we're speaking on this. So more people can speak out if they're dealing with it. That's to, to because let me tell you this. The majority of people- speak out. The, yeah, that's why we t- that's why you talk about it because the majority of people that's doing drugs nobody know they're doing drugs the majority it's easy to hide that you're popping a pill yeah. you know what i'm saying that is easy as hell it's easy to hide that you're doing lean that's easy as hell to hide so i'm just saying for the ones who's going through it i i i, I like that bow wow doing it because even talking about it in the, in the industry we don't see that who who's talking even people who had past addictions who's talking about it nobody you don't even see them talk. You may hear it on the news. Oh, this person with the rehab or whatever. But you never hear them talking about it. You may hear them put it in a rap song like Eminem. Every once in a while, he put it in a rap song. You know, like, oh, I was dealing with this and da, da, da. But you don't hear people sit down, doing an interview, and talk about it. Talking about, hey, I was addicted to this. I dealt with this, but I got through it. You don't even see that. So I'm just saying it's big for him just speaking on it. No, but Because when it comes down to it, we know that for the most part, people ain't seeing those things happen. You know, and, and, and like with Juice World, a lot of people tried to help Juice World. A lot of people who was watching and seeing what he was doing tried to get Juice World help. They tried to do two, three separate um 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 which I'm gonna call this uh 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 when 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 they all come together and um and, and have something for you to go to rehab. You know, but you the, he had three separate situations to where they came together to try to get him to go to rehab and he didn't go. You know, so that's why I'm saying when it comes down to individuals, individuals who need help, I hope that we start to see an open door for them so they could feel comfortable with now saying, you know what? Nah, I do need help. You know, I'm OK with people knowing what's going on, you know, uh, because this is going to help somebody else. 
yeah. come out. Because you know it's a trickle effect. Once you start to see one do it, two, three, four. Once you start to see now, now that Bow Wow did this, now you might might start see a lot of other celebrities coming out and sitting at, sitting down doing interviews and feeling comfortable while talking about their past addictions. Right? Yeah. That's gonna then lead to now people who dealing with it now coming out and saying, "Hey, I'm going through this. I need some help." You know what I'm saying? So I was gonna say shout out to Apollo G too. Uh, he actually did um, a while back though. He did an interview while he stopped doing uh, uh, Molly's and taking Xanaxes because he had the same problem. Like he overdosed and he was in uh, like a coma for like a couple of days. Yeah. Why right when he woke out? Like why right when he woke up? That wasn't for him no more. Like he put it down. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. He didn't mess around with it no more. But uh, yeah, shout out to Apollo G for that too. You know? Yeah, definitely, yeah. man. Anybody in the industry, you know, anybody in general that come out and speak on it. Shout out to those individuals, but I'm saying really big up to the celebrities and everything like that who come out with that because the reason I already know that a lot of them don't want to come out with it because they look at it as like a career ender. Mm -hmm. If I come out and talk about yeah. that, this could end my career. So that's why I'm even bigger shouting out them because you have more of an influence when it comes down to the young individuals out there that are looking up to y'all. You have more of an influence and you have something to risk by putting that story out, even though I think you should be praised by putting a story out like that, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Polo too, Bow Wow, and anybody yeah. else who came out telling their story that's in those positions, that's risking it all to tell people, nah, this ain't cool, this is what I went through, and this is what it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so. So, yeah, uh, let's go on and go to the uh, next topic, man. So, uh, you know, uh, Tay K, um, you know, this is going to be short and straight to the point, but uh, everybody... Who don't know about Tay K? Uh, Tay K uh, is a is a rapper. Well, he became famous as a rapper after going on a run um, and putting out um, a song that went viral, super viral, you know, and everything like that. Uh, and um, while he was he was on a run because he could allegedly, you know, with a group of other people, committed a couple of murders. You know, um, one of the murders is why he's in jail. Everybody who was a part of it at that time flipped on Tay K and told on him and he got sentenced to 55 years for that one now he's being charged for the second murder um he's been in jail now for about five six years and he's being charged for the second murder now um but he pled not guilty um to this charge so um, i'm just gonna play a, a a quick video on um how this uh went and then we'll talk about it a little bit Rejects the state plea deal offer and will be taking his second case to trial. He's currently serving 55 years in jail. Do y'all think that's the right decision? Let me know in the comments. All right, today is the plea deadline date. So is the plea being accepted? Rejected, Your Honor. All right, so we'll need a jury trial date. I'm going to recall this. Can't make that bigger, Francis. We're going to recall this for March 11th. And at that time, you will be given your jury trial date. Okay. That, that'll work, Joe. All right. So uh, if you all can make sure you recur, uh, confer off docket to see what's a good date that works for everybody's schedule. I don't do special settings in this court, but I will take co in consideration the fact that it's a date that you all have decided on. That'd be great. We, we will confer. All right. Yo, what's the word? Now check it out. Rapper TK rejects all right. the state plea deal offer. In so as we see right there, he rejected the plea offer. Um, and everything like that. Um, I, I'm, I'm guessing he rejected. He already got 55 years, you know, and I don't know if they're going to run this concurrent. So I'm guessing he rejecting it because he don't want to get life. You know, 55 years is a lot of years on, on good behavior. He could get out in maybe 42, 43 years. By that time, he got locked up when he was around 17, 18. So he could get out, in, you know, around 65 years old, maybe. And he's trying to stop from getting life. That's what I am guessing. That is why I believe he's rejecting it. Because if he if he if he lose this, then yeah, he could get life. You know, um, uh, he, not just life. He could get the death penalty. To be real, I don't know if the death penalty is still on the board for for him. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. I don't know. But he definitely could get life. Um, so um, you know, what's your thoughts, man, on this whole TK? I mean, take a uh, situation, you know, and the crazy thing about it is that after he did his song, the race that blew up when he was on a run, the dude got super popular, got a deal while he was in jail, you know. Mm -hmm. But of course, the, the only thing is millions could could do for him then is uh, help him with lawyer fees because he in jail yeah, yeah. for the next 55 years of his life. 
if that's all he gonna end up getting who knows you know but uh you know all of this happened his popularity the deal everything after he got locked up in jail you know and now he's fighting another murder but uh what are your thoughts on on tk situation man one thing i can say is that uh you know, I would have rejected it too. I mean, 55, 55 years in life, same shit to me. Ain't no different, man. Like, I'm pretty much going to be in there for the rest of my life. So, but me, I'm the type of person, man, they give me life. I'd rather just take the death penalty, man. Just give me, let me just get out of here. You feel me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doing life in, your, in jail for the rest of your life, bro. I mean, what's the point, bro? Just being locked up in a cage where you can't be with the women you want to be with. You know what I'm saying? Can't eat the foods you want to eat. You know, can't be with your loved ones, your real family members. Like, I mean, what's the point, man? It's just like, I'm just. I'm just ready to go. So all I'm saying is that I, I would have did the same thing. I would have rejected it, you know, because it's like for what, like, you know, 55 years versus life, still the same thing. So yeah, why yeah. not just reject it and see if you can see say if you can beat it. Huh? Beat it. There we go. See yeah. if you can beat it. Yeah, so yeah. I would have ran with the same thing. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, you got nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing you know what I'm saying? I, like I said, I don't, I don't, they, I don't think they came out with saying what the 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 plea deal was. I don't know if they was gonna run it concurrent and say we are gonna, you know, do sixty and we run it concurrent, and you get out now at sixty instead of fifty five. I don't know. I don't know if it was you know life without parole, but you you don't get the death penalty. I don't know what it was. All I know it was something that uh you know um that the lawyers didn't like. He didn't like it. And, um he was like, "Well, I'm going to fight it." You know, um you know, when it come down to it like when I when I see TK TK, I think I heard him talk on something too a little while ago. Um it, it's crazy, man. You know, um and this have to do with our environment and the way we being brought up, you know, and 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 where we come up, you know, at and everything like that. You know, uh, our 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 livelihood when it come down to our foundation where we do we have both parents in a household was it just the mother so we was out there running the streets getting in gangs and all of that you know uh i mentioned all of this because it seemed like tay k from being in jail now for about five six years is is changing little by little he's getting more smart and maybe trying to you know uh understand his wrongs now and, and like man i may i messed up as you get older you do that now he should be around like 24 25 years old so he's now like looking back like Hey man, I wish I I wish I had this mindset then, but it's some things you can't come back from. You know, like we was talking about earlier, the 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 the, the drug addiction. Yeah. If you survive through it, you can then live to tell your story. You know, later, like man, I changed like Bow Wow just did. You can tell your story, but when you commit a murder and you get life or sixty years and stuff like that, you could change, but you still got to serve that time. It ain't no going back on that. You know, it is what it is. You got to ride it out, you know. So I think that is important for these type of things to be highlighted, too, because we got a young, a lot of young dudes out there that's watching, you know, uh, 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 that's on social media and watching a lot of this beef drama and, and, and dudes, you know, uh, 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 banging and, 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 and killing their ops and everything like that. And they think it's cool until they go do that time. You, I mean, you, you watch First 48 too, right, yeah, bro? Yeah, you watch First 48, them dudes go and do those things, and then they in a, in a, in a, a negotiation interrogation room crying, yep. asking for their mom or their daddy, and snitching on the next man. Yep. You know, you you were so big and bad, and you did that crime, but now you in there snitching, you in there crying, wiping snot out your nose and all of that type of stuff. You know, the thing that I always say is, hey, if you're going to do it, stand on it. Yep. You know, go into that interrogation room like, it is what it is, you know, and go and serve your time like a man. Like, hey, this is where I should be. It is what it is. You know, write it out like that. Don't be on there, crying, you know, crying and all this other type of stuff after you didn't put yourself in that position trying to be big and bad and follow what everybody else is doing on social media and, and in your hood and all of that type of stuff. Yeah. Now nah, you got to stand on it. But but I also understand that when you're not raised right, you following others and you just doing what you're seeing others do. Yeah. And you just doing what people probably is telling you to do. So I get that, you know. But that's why, you know, a lot of us need to, like, what we doing here, speak on it. And a lot of older cats who didn't been through some things need to talk to the younger cats and let them know. Yeah. Whether they hard-headed or not. Let them know, hey, this is what can happen. Look at Take K's situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Look at a lot of these situations and look at what's happening to these young cats. They learning later, but you still got to serve all that time. So you better change now. Are you going to be on the first 48 crying for asking for your mom or your dad? And, and they can't help you, you know, snitching on your boys and everything like that, even though you was the one who was a part of it pulling a gun. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we see in nowadays. A lot of that. 
You know, that's why we talking about snitching every week. This person just snitched on that person. That person just snitched. Oh, this person is the, everybody in the industry is snitches. We finding videos of everybody man, with interrogation everybody. videos snitching man. and snitching and this and that and this and that. You get what I'm saying? That's where we at right now because it's happening in our community. Yep. You know, everybody trying to be big and bad until you got to go sit in that interrogation room. Exactly. You know? So, I mean, hopefully people learn from this AK situation, man, yeah. because we got to see this live from step one all the way to where it's at now. When the dude was on a race and put that video out, when he was still on a run and then the cops found him and then he got locked up and everybody turned on him, he got 55 to now fighting another case. We got to watch it all in prime time. You know, yeah. so we get to see what happens with that. You're not getting away with it. You know, in a video, Tay-K was talking. He said that he thought he was, he said he never saw himself when he was on the run. He said he didn't see himself going to jail. Mm. These young dudes do not even understand and know you're going to go to jail. <laughs> you know, like I be watching these murders. I'm like, you people don't understand. You're not getting away with a murder. Yeah. You're not. Look, look, people. Hey, young cats out there, just know and understand this. You're not beat. You're not getting away with a murder. You're going to get caught and you're not beating a murder. You know, I'm not saying it ain't one per, a one percent chance that it hasn't happened before, but it's very slim. So to think that you're gonna go murder somebody and now you know you 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 you, you they can't find you at your house, you out hiding or whatever and this and that, and think that you're gonna get away with it, it's not happening. You're gonna get caught. I promise you. So I get it. Where we come from, we not taught certain things and we following others. But you better smarten up at some point and understand. Hey. You could catch a charge. If you know you can catch a charge for it, then stay away from it. Or at least try to get away from it because you'll end up just like Take A. Right now the world is looking at your life. Go down the drain. Period. You know, so. That's facts. Yeah. Anything else to say about this Take A situation, bro? Man, I, I guess I hope he get his 55 years <laughs> or less. I mean. Concurrently. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully yeah. that's it, right? Yeah, not the life, but yeah. Man, I hope for the best. Man, sad situation, man. Mm -hmm. Sad, sad situation. All right, man. Uh, uh we gonna uh I, look. We talked a lot about Puff, you know, in his situations yeah. lately, man. A whole lot about Puff. Um, it this this stuff won't stop. You know, we now right now have another situation where a producer who is working with Puff named Little Rod has now put out a lawsuit against Puff. Now, Rod did a couple of um, lives where he was speaking on this situation about how he wasn't getting paid and how he was getting treated, how he was getting done and everything like that. And, um, you know, uh, after Rod put out that first live, he didn't put out another live later. You know, I'm not going to show these lives. That's why I'm speaking on it. Um, he put out another live after that, basically saying that people are now after him for putting out that live, saying what he was saying the first time, you know, and everything yeah. like that. So, you know, uh, pray for him and all of that. After that situation, what we saw come out was a lawsuit from Little Rod talking about a lot of the sexual assault that he dealt with and that he's dealing with and that he's going through and everything like that. And added a lot of people in the industry name in the lawsuit, you know, um, this is this is. To me, this is even an even crazier lawsuit than the Cassie lawsuit because yeah. Little Rod is basically saying, allegedly, he got video, he got pictures of everything that he's saying about the sexual assault, a lot of the gay stuff and everything like that that goes on in the industry. He's talking about all of that in this lawsuit. So I think, to me, this is the most detrimental lawsuit that has been you know, uh, up against Puff. You know, like, you know, because this is going deep into the things that people speculated when it come down to sexual assault, the, the gay rumors and everything like that. Right. Especially the stuff that we heard within the industry. And let me tell you all something. I got something I'm going to speak on about this as well when it come down to the industry. And a lot of these rumors we hear of, of, of gay situations and everything and, and all of that. Uh, uh, um, I got something to speak on don't go there mentally not what what it's not what y'all think but i have experienced a situation close to what little rod is talking about um and i've never spoke on this live or anything like that about this part of my past when it comes down to the industry but i will today but before we do that Hey, Francis, let's play the video um of um um the news breaking down this uh, lawsuit with little rod
against John Diddy Combs, a music producer, is accusing hip hop mogul of. We good, Francis? Sexually assaulting him and forcing him to have sex with prostitutes. But a lawyer for Combs called the events described in the lawsuit pure fiction. This is now one of several sexual assault lawsuits filed against Combs in recent months, including a lawsuit from the R&B singer Cassie that was settled last year. To break this all down for us, I want to bring in trial attorney and ABC News contributor Brian Buckmeyer. So nice to see you. Always great to be here with you. So you've, you've been covering this for, for a while. I mean, you're familiar with Sean P. Uh, Diddy Combs. Not only does this lawsuit mention Diddy, it also includes other A-list celebrities. What stands out here to you? So if you see me looking down, I'm looking down at the 73-page complaint that was filed yesterday. In terms of allegations of celebrities, we're talking about Cuba Gooding Jr. being shown through still photos of what the complainant says they have videos of, of groping him. There are allegations of P. Diddy um, touching the genitalia and anus of the complainant. And also, if you look to the complaint here, there's a few Easter eggs here where it says the rapper redacted on Mr. Combs' yacht consorting with underage girls uh, and sex workers and you look down to the redaction, it says, well, the person is a Philly rapper who dated uh, Nicki Minaj. I think that may be Meek Mills. And also says an R&B singer redacted in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home, consorting with underage girls and sex work. And when you go down to the redaction, it says he's a Grammy Award-winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian billionaire. I don't know who's a billionaire from Barbados that we know that dated someone. That sounds like Chris Brown. So there's a lot of big names here, both as Easter eggs and also just on the front pages of these allegations. Wow, just huge. Now, the lawsuit also claims the misconduct happened during the creation of Diddy's latest album, the Love Album, and is seeking, as we've mentioned, $30 million. Uh, the suit not only names the mogul, but includes his son and Universal Music Group, claiming there is an alleged RICO enterprise to enable his misconduct. Explain why the lawsuit goes beyond Diddy and what's kind of at stake here. This, along with Cassie's uh, lawsuit that you talked about earlier that was settled, reads a lot like what we saw in the R. Kelly case in the EDNY, where they're talking about this being a criminal enterprise that's all feeding towards this one individual's uh, depravity of wanting drugs and sex and rock and roll, roll and everything in between, that everyone seemed to know and go out and facilitate what Sean Diddy Combs wanted. Even in part of these allegations or these complaints, they call his chief of staff the Ghislaine Maxwell to P. Diddy's uh, Jeffrey Epstein, saying that this was a total sexual enterprise to feed into uh, his desires. And we want to note that Diddy has denied all claims right. against him, but this can't possibly help his brand. Like, how do, where do you see this going, and, and, and where do you see this lawsuit going? <laughs> Again, I draw the comparison to, to that of R. Kelly, where there might have been rumors in the background. There were lawsuits that were settled. There were whispers uh, behind closed doors. But as those whispers start to grow and grow and get louder, you potentially could see greater civil litigation. They're saying in this case they want to fight it. Potentially we see a, a, a jury trial out of here. But this is based on sex trafficking allegations as well as claims that are criminal in nature. For me, I'm thinking SDNY, that being the Southern District of, Manha of New York, right here in Manhattan, they're probably looking at these allegations allegations and thinking, where are the videos? Where are these still shots that we're seeing in these complaints? And can we investigate it to see if there's more here, potentially criminal charges? And that could probably come out at some point. Potentially. All right, Brian, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for unwrapping that for us. My pleasure. All right. So uh, before, before I go into a, a little story when it has to, that has to do um, somewhat with what's being talked about within the industry, what Lil Rob put out and stuff that we've been hearing for years within the industry, a story that I have never, ever spoke on before. I haven't even spoke on this to the bro. You know, this was so long ago, and um, I just I just left it alone. I, I probably, only about three people know about this story. But before we do that, um, you heard Meek Mill name was named up in this, itch, up in this lawsuit as well. Um, and academics, he talked about um, this and, um, you know, spoke on Meek, you know, like, uh, Hey, hey, Meek, you basically said, Meek, if, if you was a part of this, you need to come out and say something or whatever. Like, you know, Act talk about everything, every story that's going on. So I didn't think that anything was wrong with what Act did. But Meek took it to the heart because, you know, Act is, is pretty big. Millions of people are seeing what Act is saying. And Meek didn't like that his name got mentioned by Act, whether it was in a lawsuit or not. So uh, when Meek saw this, he basically 
said, uh, uh, somebody send me academics address. Almost like, you know, I'm, I'm showing, I'm going to show up. You know, he got to see me now. And then he said after that, I'll die to shut you down. That's what he told at. Um, and I can put him up on the screen, but I'm not. So I'm going to read it. So, um, after me said, I'll die to shut you down. Act and said, nigga, when you talk about asking for my address online, you talk about death games. You must think you invisible. You don't talk about pulling up to a street, uh, niggas home. Cause you ain't on that with them. So don't be on that with me. And then he said, nigga, we talk, uh, he, he said, uh, nigga, we talking, we, we over talking. You've been threatening and tweeting for eight years. Say less. Cause at this point we don't believe shit you say. And then he said, we finna do a 6ix9ine, huh? Remember when he pulled up on you and all you did was pull your camera? If people don't know what he's talking about, it was an event a while ago when Meek said, when I see 6ix9ine, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be problems. But Meek did see him and he just pulled his camera out. So he's talking about that situation. And he's basically saying, oh, oh, 6ix9ine is, is the police. He's the feds. That's why he didn't do nothing, right? So that's what I'm talking about. And then after that, he said, "Dog, you got on the phone with me and told me James he, and told me James Harden told you that me and Six Nine were planning to pop out on you. We see, we seen the Six Nine video. You just pulling out the camera guy. You bunny hop from Michael Rubin, Roger Kraft, I mean Robert Kraft, and get called boy to billionaires. You they house nigga slave." You ask for all your financial advice on Twitter because the billionaires you around you just doing chores for them. Nigga, that's half the reason you fell off. The image don't match. Plus, we see you hit that boxing ring, fam. And me and you could box. You know, uh, and he said, the way I'm talking to Meek is when you realize this facade of being some ultra superhero gangster, a bunch of BS. Nigga cried for six months in jail for popping a willy, but you want to but you want me to believe he's so gangster, he finna ask the whole internet for my address. Front his move by what he finna do, then do it. Nigga, please, find someone to play with, Freak Mill. I promise you put no one in fear. And then after that, you know, you would you would probably think that Meek Mill is gonna, you know, say something crazy, right? Yeah. So Meek then after that put out a tweet saying, the governor called me and checked me. Uh, and, and The governor called me and checked me. I took it down after I explained to him this the guy, talking about act, that powered the biggest rap beefs that killed some of my friends playing undercover. And then after that, he said, new music out. We off him. And then after that, uh, act said, you still getting told what to do by old white men? Just stop, uh, just stop cosplaying as a gangster, man. We respect the reform shit you, you do. You talking like you anything else is just laughable. And plus, you still ain't addressed the nigga who sued you and said the shit. Um, and then after that, he said, nigga was just talking about he finna be ready to die about his issues with me. Now said some old white governor convinced him not to. Not his family, not his friends. A white governor, embarrassing. This is how... He lost that beef to Drake. All tweets. Dang. <laughs> Ack went off. Ack went off, man. Ack was not playing, you know, and everything like that. Uh, I mean, but, I, man, I, I've been saying it for a long time. When it come down to the, uh, I know we going from one story to the next, but I'm just going to speak on this, you know, because it had something to do with that story. Yeah. But, you know, we talked about this a long time. I've been saying from the beginning, all these rappers are not who you think they are when it come down to the streets. They 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 not really out there, you know, uh, uh, banging like the real dudes is out there banging and everything like that. And on the streets, you know, popping guns, robbing and all of this type of stuff. All those dudes are locked up or dead or are, are they dudes who just got off a, a 20, 30 year bids and now out, you know, telling their stories. Those are those dudes, you know, to be honest, the dudes like Cowboy. You know who sit here. He really been through that. The dude served long synthesis. The dude, everybody know him as a respect. The bull, 60s gang member you know what i'm saying like like you know big you you know all of those individuals you know even somebody like munchie you know you know what he been through these are real dudes who really been through something the stuff that you hear from the rappers they was the dudes in the streets who could rap really good that's telling their stories that's telling the cowboy the big you the munchie you know all of their stories they're telling their stories but that ain't the way they really live. So we've been saying this for the longest that that's not really what it's about. And they not finna risk their millions and all that. Like, come on, man. Half of these dudes went to college, got degrees and everything. J. Cole, all of them. You know what I'm saying? You know, even though, uh, shout out to J. Cole and people like Kendrick, they never, you know, uh, uh, faked the funk. 
with who they who they are. They never Drake too. You know Drake too. Yeah, you know a lot of them. They 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 they, they rap. You know hard because that's what rap rap is hard. Yeah. You know, but they never said I'm some big gangster. Yeah, you know, you know people that. like you know Megan. A lot of them said I'm a gangster. So I mean, you know, I mean going and telling the governor that um, he basically was telling on act right. Ain't he telling on act? He yeah, said, baby. you know, he said, he said, you know, he told the governor that yep. this is the dude that started the biggest rap beef in hip hop. He telling on snitch academics. Him. Snitch him. Me told on academics. Come on, Big, what you doing? Snitch telling him. on academics, bro. That was funny though, man. But uh, I don't know, bro. What's your before before we go on, uh to the rest of this talking about Lil okay. Rod? What's your thoughts on this situation, man, with Academic, man? Well, Academic, uh, Meek is a bitch. I don't even listen to Meek Mills. I've been off of Meek Mills way back when that situation happened. Like he, what we, uh, what academics was talking about when, um, when um, that six nine situation when he pulled up at the club. Oh yeah, on Meek Mills. Right when I seen that, I was like, done. I'm not fucking with Meek, Meek Mills no more. Not listen to his music. I've been off of him because it's like, bro, he's gonna speak about all that gangster stuff. I'm gonna pull up. We on this and that. I'm on this type of term. You know what I'm saying? I'm shooting. And got guns on me. All this type of crap. All, all this gangster bull crap. But then. The biggest snitch in the world at that point in time, you know what I'm saying, was in your face, spitting all in your face, you know what I'm saying, calling you names, saying fuck you, all that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and you going to just look at him <laughs> and not do nothing? <laughs> like, bruh, like, that killed his whole image to me, bro. I yeah. wasn't a fan at all after that, man, because no matter what, if you a real one, no matter what, I would have I would have knocked him out, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would have, hey, I would, no matter, you got money anyway, you would have got right back out of jail. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? But it's about defending who you are. It's about your about you know your, your your image, protecting your image, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I've been off of Meek Mills, man. So hey, what DJ Academics doing, going back and forth with even Meek Mills, he right. There ain't nothing gonna happen. You know, Meek Mills ain't gonna do shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, this ain't nothing new, man. You know, that's why I say we listening, you know, to this whole situation, sitting back reading it and laughing and everything like that about this. Yeah. Between at not 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 the stuff Lil Rob was saying, let's let's be clear. But about the stuff with Akin and Meek, you know, when it come down to, you know, uh Meek Mill, because this is the stuff that we've been seeing. Yeah. You know, uh, uh we know what it is in the industry and we know that these dudes is not who they say they are and portray. Cause dude if you really were who you said you were in your music, you would be locked up on a life sentence. Fat Joe said itself. What'd he say? Recently in an interview, 90, what'd he say? Like 90% of what, what we say, say is, lies. is lies. He called it out. So, I mean, it, you know, stand on what it is. You know what I'm saying? We saw the, look, and it's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that. But we saw who the real Meek was when he said he talked to the governor. You know, basically, and the governor, you know, he's, he's telling you, hey, Ak, I talked to the governor, and the governor, you know, he basically, you know, told me to back up because, you know, you're the guy who 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 start beefs, you know, so step away, you know? Th that's who that's who Meek is, you know? Yeah. Just stand on who you are. That's all I'm saying. Don't try to act tough. Hey, man, I'm not, hey, where his Addy at? I'm going to shoot it up. Yeah. Come on, bro. Like, that ain't who you are. So just, you know, be who you are. That's all. I'm, nothing wrong with it. Just be who you are, you know? So Now you see why I be so mad when these rappers try to compare themselves to Tupac. I'm like, y'all wasn't real like a nigga like that. I was like, Tupac was was real. You know, I never seen a rapper really pull up, stop, seen two officers beat on another black guy and just really got out to protect him and shot at them without... No, I never seen... A rapper might defend himself, like, oh, I shot that dude, but defend himself, but I never seen him try to protect... His own people, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they talk about all that big and bad stuff. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? When a white, pay, white man say jump, they jump. Yeah. Tupac wasn't like that. It was real. If he said it, I'll protect my people by my people. He was really about his people. Yeah. And these rappers these days, I hate when they try to compare themselves to Tupac. But that's what I'm trying to say, bro. Like, yeah. they ain't real. Yeah. And that's why, that's why, yeah, you know, I said, you know, if you was really like that, let's be real. And that's why I say it's nothing wrong with not being like that. But most of the time, you ended up dead or in jail. Tupac yeah, died. Down. You know, before he turned anyway, way before he turned thirty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude like died. Before. Dude died at 25 years old. You know what I'm saying? So you know, uh, when it come down to it, we see what happened when you really about that about as a that. black man. Yeah. You know, you not you not finna just scave through where you know uh uh you know not much happened to you. you no, know, that ain't, that ain't the, that that don't work. Look at all them you banging on wax. Most of them dudes on banging on wax is dead or in jail. Yeah, all Most just about all of them about are dead or in jail. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. So yeah, uh, but that's that situation. But going back to the situation with Little Rod, um, like I said, Little Rod uh, put out this sexual assault case against Diddy um, and everything like that. And and, and I'm gonna say this: 
do, do I do I know that this stuff really happened? No, I don't know. None of us know. You know, the only one that know is Little Rod and everybody that's associated in that lawsuit. You know, and they even had Cuba Gooding Jr. name up in the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, uh, when it come down to everything that Little Rod said, is Little Rod lying? I don't know. Do I believe him? I think that he have a lot of truth to what he say, you know, and everything. And, and, and I'm going to just speak on this really quick, you know. So the reason why I say that Little Rod have a, I believe that there is some truth. Is everything true? I don't know. But are there some truth that Little Rod is saying when it comes down to the sexual misconduct, the sexual assault, a lot of the, the, the gay stuff in the industry between men and everything like that um, and these labels? Yeah, I believe a lot of that stuff is going on. And I believe it from a past experience um, that I've had when I was really going hard with my music and working on a deal with a certain label. Now, a lot of people who maybe know me as the host or a businessman on this show and everything like that don't know that I was very, very heavy in music 10 years ago, you know, and everything like that, you know, to where... Um, the music videos, deal on the table, everything. You know, um, our family, we come from a family of musicians, you know, um, and everything like that. A lot of talent, you know, um, people who play instruments, sing, rap, everything. At the time when I was doing music, um, had a manager, producer, and everything, but I was sing rapping. Um, and um, you know, going into why I believe Little Rod's story, um, a lot of things that Little Rod said in his story. Um, is because so when I was working on a particular deal with the label, uh, a, a big label that most people know about, um, I went through a situation to where I was asked to do something that I was not going to do. I was asked to do something that I, I was like, nah, I, I was step completely away of this is something that I got to do. So just to give people a little bit of back history when it come down to it. I was doing, like I said, hip hop and R&B. And first the label was asking me to do little things. You know, of course, you know, send the music. My manager was in really close with one of the execs that was a part of this label and they was working on a deal. They wanted me with um, our own money first to shoot a music video. They picked a song out of my album, Life Chronicles 2. They picked a song that they wanted us to do a video off of. I wanted to do a different song because the song that they picked was very sexual and, you know, they wanted me to show skin. They wanted me to maybe do it with a girl to just, you know, bring that uh, a sexy feel to it and everything like that. You know, I was like, whatever, you know, I wanted to do like I'm a G or money bands, you know, because we was working on getting Trey songs on my song money bands. So me, I was like, man, I want to do one of those songs. But they wanted me to do the very sexual song. And just to show you guys a little bit of the proof of this video that was done, I'm going to play just a just a minute and a half of a video that I did at this time. Um, and I did it because the label wanted me to do a song to, um, wanted me to do a video to this song. And it's a song I did called Got Me Orny. You know, um, I wanted to do another song. They wanted this one. And I'm saying this and I'm being specific about saying this because it's going somewhere. Um, but I wanted to just be known. They picked this song for a reason. But um, Francis, play a little bit of um, this song. And like I said, this was done like 10 years ago, you know, when I was really heavy in the music. But let's play a little bit of it, Francis. Yeah, I had a bad one last night, though, man. Look, bro, in it too. <laughs> She was bad, man. I'm thinking about, you know, if I meet this girl again, I'm gonna wipe this one up. But y'all think about that though. I don't know, man. Just take it slow, man. That's all I can say, man. You don't know, Davey. You always don't take it, bro. I don't know, man. You just slow up. I'm gonna tell you what you tell us, man. You ain't got time for that. But now you gotta wipe me out. You was mad when I was doing that. Steve-O! The 
It's for the ladies, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tonight I'm feeling really lonely, really lonely. So come over here and put it on me I like the way you're screaming, coming on me Damn girl, you got me feeling horny I said tonight I'm feeling really lonely So come over here and put it on me Girl, I want it right now. Uh-huh. And trust tonight, you gonna be making sense. My abs are gonna be on that belly button, yeah, we working out. Working out. And I ain't playing no games, girl. Tonight is going down. Yeah. You gon' feel the rush, I'm going in with your ass up. You start screaming, I'm not stopping. Nails on my back, I'm me scratched up. We two in the here, we got it pop. And girl, we got a lot of okay. options. Lick it, ride up and down. Missionary on your side. Hey girl, tonight I'm feeling really lonely. Really lonely. So come over here and put it on me. Put it on me. I like the way you scream when coming on me. Coming on me. Damn girl, you got me feeling horny. Feeling horny. I said tonight I'm feeling really lonely. Really lonely. So come over here and put it on me. Put it on me, girl. I like the way you scream. I'm a G, so it gets real. Yeah. While I massage your body, just lay and chill. Uh. Hey, girl, this fight gonna be a thrill. Uh. Now, round two, I'm gonna knock it out, gonna hit the bell. Yeah. We in the bed doing dog yourself, home shit. Yeah. Yeah. Back and fuck you, rocking it, girl, you a beast. Yeah, boy, make a lot of noise, we breaking my legs. Give a damn, you were those extra fees. And then we feeling it doing the most. Hit the shots, pouring, we rocking above. You moaning so loud that the neighbors are numb. That we have sex with a passion and get it for show. Yeah, that's for show, I'm on the road. But she already right at the shows. Walking legs wide open. I go to school like field goals. I'll give it to her. She say, give me mo. I spank my ass, gonna call me out. Okay. She with it, get it. All night, I'ma kill it, beat it. I'm a son. Hey, girl, tonight I'm feeling really lonely. Only girl, so come over here. All right, we can stop it there. It's going to get too graphic. It's going to get too graphic. <laughs> well, you continue, bro. Shout out to Karma, though, man. Hey, Beautiful shout out to Karma, Karma man. Yeah, lie. Karma in that video, <laughs> man. Karma was a was a beast. They got a little bit more graphic than that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that ain't the point. That ain't the point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, shout out to Karma. Um, I haven't saw Karma in a while, man. But Karma, very professional. Um, she also sings, man. Great. Amazing. You know, uh, but... um. You know the industry ain't for everybody, but uh, but yeah, Karma very, 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 very talented. You know, and you see she did her thing, and that uh, if you if you watch the whole thing, you see she really, really did her thing. You know, but um, I wanted to show that video for a point. This is the video that the label asked me to do. All right, y'all may be like, well, so what? You know, and everything like that. Well, I didn't. I said the same thing. I didn't know where they was going with it. That's why I was okay with doing that particular video. But I'm like. Okay, where are they going with this and everything? So they sent us the paperwork when it came down to doing the deal. We had the deal set. A manager came to me with the paperwork, but they had stipulations when it came down to signing the deal. So this particular label, they have a magazine. Now, the magazine that they put in a, um, 
email. I've never heard of that magazine before. You know, I don't know if this is some industry magazine. I have no idea. But they have a magazine that they wanted me to do a shoot for. And they put in detail the exact type of shoot they wanted me to do. They wanted me to do a shoot with a lot of other men in nothing but just spandex looking draws. No shirt, no socks, no pants. Just a lot of men huddled up together taking pictures on like beds and, 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 and no girls either. No girls in this shoot. Just a bunch of men. You know what I'm saying? And, um... Like models, model men who are models and everything like that. And they wanted me to go and do this shoot um, uh, for this particular magazine that they said that they they were going to put out. Like I said, I don't know what I'm, <laughs> the magazine they named. I've never I, and I'm not I'm, I'm not here to put everything out, but the magazine they named. I've never heard of it. So this could be an industry magazine that's being sent around the industry. I don't know. But they said, if I do that, then the deal is done. Um, it was a two year term. I had to go and do this shoot with all of these men in our draw zone, huddle up on beds and everything like that, you know, uh, scrunched up with each other and everything. And I got a deal. Now, my manager wanted me to do it, <laughs> but I particularly said, hell no. One thing that I will never do is sell my soul. You know, me going to huddle up with a bunch of men. You know, to so so y'all could pass around the industry, you know, and, and I don't know, maybe have some evidence on me. I don't know what they wanted to have, you know, to 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 for me to go out and do these uh do this photo shoot or whatever. I don't know what they wanted, but all I know is that I wasn't finna do it. For one, I'm not finna sit in no bed in no drawers with no bunch of men doing nothing. It was not happening. And who knows what they would have wanted me to do after that. So when I said, hell no, I'm not doing none of that. The deal was off the table. It was over. So I didn't do what they wanted me to do. And that was it. But later, that showed me why they wanted me to do that song. They wanted to present me to probably the label and they people and say, hey, what do y'all think about this guy? He's, I don't know. Maybe they thought he's sexy. This and that, da, 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 da. You know, we can have him do a shoot, you know, put him in this magazine. We could really sell him when it come down to this part of the industry, which, like I said, I don't know. I wasn't going to sell myself, my soul and find out more. So I decided not to do it. Me and my manager relationship didn't last too much more after that. Uh, you know, still shout out to Steve, who was my producer, man. Got nothing but love for him and everything like that. But for me, that was kind of it. That put a bad taste in my mouth when it came down to music after that. And I just focused straight on business and helping out our community and, and everything like that and, and telling my story. Now, I never told this particular story because I didn't, I was like, why? You know what I'm saying? For one, it, it was, it felt embarrassing to, to tell people this in the first place. I, I was just like, let me just go on and get up out of here. And, and do my thing independently because I see when you go into some system and everything like that, they want you to do things that to me have to do with selling your soul and a lot of gay shit. You know, excuse my French, this gay shit that I don't know that's going on in this industry. So I say all this to say when it come down to Little Rod, a lot of stuff that he have in his lawsuit, I don't think the dude is lying. I think that's the industry, man. I got to see a little sneak peek. Of what's going on in the industry. And if I would have went further. I would have probably saw a lot more. And who knows right now. I could be a big star. Millions and all of that. Because I follow what they wanted me to follow. So that also showed me. We don't know what a lot of individuals. In the industry is really doing. We don't know why they're in the industry. The industry I'm telling you this now. Don't have to just do with talent. Yes a lot of people are highly talented. But it's a lot of people in the industry that just did what they had to do to get in the industry. So what Little Rod is saying, hey, that's between Little Rod, those individuals, the court legal system, and God. Only them know the truth. Well, the court don't know the truth, but Little Rod, those people in that, the, the documentation, and God. Only they know the truth. But it's up to the court to decide who's right, who's wrong, who's lying, who's not. All I'm saying, all Paul P is saying, and I'm going to leave it at that, and we're going to talk about it a little bit and move on. All Paul P is saying is that I don't think Little Rod is lying about everything he's saying when it has to do with the gay rumors. I witnessed it. I've been through it, and it happens, period. So I just wanted to put that out. But um, 
Anything to say about Lil Rod or, or this situation? Anything, bro? Fuck P. Diddy. I used to look up to P. Diddy. I ain't a big fan of P. Diddy no more. And I put like this. I'm not saying it because he's gay. I'm just saying it because I don't respect him. You know what I'm saying? As far as a, a person that not show... I, I like a person. I trust the people and respect people that is up front who they are when you get to know them. Or before you get to know them. I'm just trying to say, like, I, I, I expect people to be up front. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I respect a gay dude more than... P Diddy right now because at least up front he gonna tell you who he is. I like man, bam. Okay, you see what it is, bam. You you know who that person is. You know what you're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? P Diddy, I don't like that 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 him trying to hide. That's that's what scares me, man. I hate dealing or being around people that that's hiding something that I don't know what they really about. Just be yeah. up front of who you are. And that's how I'm, that's what makes me respect you as a man. You feel me? Yeah. So with P Diddy, you know, uh, hiding all this, all this coming out the closet right now, the respect level just went down. With P Diddy, man, yeah. and um, I don't fuck with P Diddy. I wouldn't advise even my son to look up to P Diddy right now. You feel me? So I put it to you like that, man. That's how I'm gonna put it out there, man. Yeah, yeah. P Diddy is closed. Yeah, out my yeah. book. <laughs> I feel you, bro. Yeah. Would you uh, would you have did the photo shoot? Okay, on the photo shoot. Would, um, you, would you have did it, bro? Come on, man. <laughs> Why are you gonna tell me some crap like that, bro? What the heck? <laughs> What's wrong, with bro, man? <laughs> bro literally just asked me what I would have did the photo shoot with several other men in my speedos. <laughs> Come on, y'all. What do y'all think? Hell no. <laughs> you know, now if it was oh, women, man. then okay, hell yeah. Of course, Woo! at that time, hell of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of men, nah, hell no. No, no oh, amount of money man. couldn't pay me to do that, bro. No, no amount of money out there couldn't pay me to do that. You see why I ran at all. You yeah. see why I ran. Yeah. Hey, Francis, would you have did the photo shoot? <laughs> did he say yeah? I said, he nah. said, oh, I, nah, I, said <laughs> I ain't gonna do you like that, Francis. Francis, <laughs> like, hold up. Hey, after that, I went and changed my life, got saved and everything, bro. I was like, I'm done with this, bro. I see what it really is out here, bro. I was like, that's all I needed to see. Man. You know what I'm saying? I would have rather, rather your manager did what P. Diddy did to Usher, like just put him around a gang of women. You know what I'm saying? But, I wish but look, bro, like we don't really like, know oh. what Usher really been through. We don't know. You're right. We wasn't right. there, and that's Usher crazy. was in his lawsuit, too. Yeah, he is in a lawsuit. Not in a lawsuit right. that's doing something to him, but being around when this stuff was, yeah, going, on. was going on. So we look, bro, we really don't know. That's what I'm saying. Everybody out there who say, man, people are just making this stuff up. It ain't really like that. I wanted to tell this story to kind of not not really. I don't know Little Rod, but to kind of put a stamp on, hey, the dude may not be necessarily lying. You don't build up this big old lawsuit for $30 million with all of this stuff in detail. Say you got pictures and videos and be lying about everything. He's not lying about everything. Maybe some of it he is. I don't know. But he's not lying about everything. So when it comes down to these gay rooms in this year, the reason why I've never sat back ever and said, when we hear this stuff, man, these dudes just lying about these dudes. Man, I've never said that because I've been through something that showed me not the industry have a lot of gay vibes when it comes down to it. And nothing against the gay community. I'm a Christian man, though, so I don't believe in it, but it's... I'm not here to go against that community. You know what I'm saying? I respect everybody. I, I let somebody from uh, 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 that's gay or whatever sit at this table. And we can have a talk or whatever, you know? So nothing against the gay community. I'm just saying people are doing that type of stuff behind closed doors and not being straight up with who they really are. To me, exactly. I don't care what nobody say. If you're doing stuff behind closed doors, that's really who you are. You, I don't care if it's the, on the down low or whatever. I don't give a crap. No. If you letting men put they and you and do all of that then that's what you like i don't care if you say well i like women too or or no i'm about women no you like that you, like you just not being real and you probably like that primarily and more but you just don't want people to know you get what i'm saying yeah. so i'm just saying at the end of the day that it, that's that's in the industry man all right as much as people though, don't want to believe it it's in the industry knowing that you know with p diddy coming out the closet like this would you do business with P Diddy? No, absolutely not. Never. No. Like what you what you think about P Diddy? I wouldn't when when I when I went through that situation I, after that, I wouldn't do business with nobody in the music industry, you know, um because now I see what it really is. That's why after that, if you notice, bro, everything that I did was independent. My businesses, the city, everything. I'm like, I didn't want to work with nobody when it came down to no industry. I I wanted to still do the stuff that I loved, but work with any of these individuals in the industry? Never. I'm good. I'd rather be independent. I rather I rather just 
throughout my career make a hundred thousand and be happy that hey at least i did it independently and try to put other people on and it just right. didn't work you know what i'm saying you know but that's what it is then sell my soul yeah. and go and uh, uh be something that i'm not you know what i'm saying so after that no i wouldn't work with p diddy but i wouldn't work with none of them at all ever you know what i'm saying so the thing that i would want to ask is a lot of people in the industry if they could do it over again the stuff that they've been through to get there, would they go through that again? That's one thing I would want to know from like the people, like the ushers, the me, whoever it was, you know, who if the Chris's did, I don't know if any of them went through some stuff. Bow Wow's, all of them. If they went through some stuff, would y'all go through all of that again to be where you're at today? Some of us just was not willing to see all, to, to to go through all of that to 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 be in those positions and places, you know. Um, but as we see, a lot of people are. See, a lot of people want fame that bad. They want to be discovered that bad, you know, and everything like that, <laughs> you know. Uh, may, maybe thanks to we come from a, a Christian household. Our grandfather was a pastor, you know, and everything like that. Maybe because of the background we came from, we just can't see a world like that that we can live in. Maybe that's what it is. We don't know because that was what we came up under, you know, but we see when it come down to people who live amongst this world, a lot of them are okay with doing whatever they got to do to be famous and be rich and successful, you know, but that's, that's them, you know? So, yeah. but when it come down to Lil Rod, I'm gonna say this one more time. I don't believe he's lying about everything. And a lot of people out there don't necessarily believe the stuff you hear from the people that you look up to. Don't necessarily just believe what you're hearing because it is some secret society in the industry that a lot of people don't know about at all, at all, you know? So, hey, you know, uh, it is what it is, and that's what it is, so. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else to say about this, bro? Shit. Uh, well, I, I, get, I, I hope that helped out a lot of people. A lot of up and coming artists yeah, out there right yeah. now, bro. Uh, what you just said, man. So yeah. um, understand yeah. what it is. Unless they cool with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe. Never, yeah, a lot of people yeah. maybe cool with it. You yeah, know, some people cool you, with it. Yeah. We know we we've been down in Hollywood. I lived yeah. in Hollywood and Hollywood. all that. It's a lot of people down there that is you could tell is cool with anything. Yeah, jump on it quick. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, bunch of dudes. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I'm gonna yeah. get a deal. I'm gonna be able to you know yeah. now, now go out and get signed with a label yeah. in a big label at that. Let's do it. Yeah. A lot of a lot of them out there, they didn't came from different states and everything, and came to Hollywood, and they funny acting. So funny acting, exactly. it's a hey, they got a lot of people that's ready, but people that's not like that just know what you you dealing with and what you're gonna go up against. You know, unless you do it independent, like somebody like Nip, we was talking about yeah, that earlier. Yeah. Nip did it independent. independent. You know, Nip didn't take a deal until they had to do a partnership with him because yeah, he made so much money on the street. You can't tell nobody like Nip nothing. nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So unless you do it like that, straight independent from the beginning and later decide to, hey, I'm a partner up with, it's all business yeah. and I'm a partner up with a label or something, then, hey, go into that direction. But if you're going to just go and straight try to get a deal because of your talent, maybe you're, you're a little bit popular because of social media, but you're going to try to do a deal, which is mainly those 360 deals. Just know that it's, it's stuff that come with that. It's, I guarantee it's something that come with every 360 deal. Everybody who did a 360 deal, I guarantee it's something that came with it. 100%. Some people who did partnership or label deals, maybe not as much. I don't know. But if you did a 360, which is mainly sh going straight through the label and, and taking a hit on a, on a, on a, on a back end, you know, get a, get some money on the front end, but on the back end, you take that hit. That's a 360 deal. I'm sure that they've been through some stuff. So I just wanted to just say that, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, I got one more topic, but before we go into that last topic, uh, Francis, let's play, a, uh, let's, let's listen to, or let's look at what people are saying in the chat, man. Read a little bit of the chat, you know, um, and everything like that, man. You know, we always want to show everyone love, man, who, um, you know, uh, wrote something in the chat. We appreciate you all. Hey, going into the future, too, we just want to get to a place where we got a lot more people in the chat that's saying stuff. But eventually, we're going to get to a place to where we start reading the chat throughout the show um, and everything. Um, but, um, you know, right now, we just read it at towards the end. But just know that, too, man. If, if y'all start writing more and, and getting more people involved in, in, in our chat here uh, for our live streams, we'll start reading the chat throughout the show. All right, uh, Albert Canem, um, Black Businesses is that they want you to value the black owned part of the business and not the product or services the businesses provide um provides that's not necessarily true 
when it come down to that. You know, I'm a black business owner. And um, I, 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 I'm not, I, I never cared about just valuing the black owned part. Now, that's important. Don't get me wrong. That's important. But it is all about the services. You know, I have a staffing agency where we staff nurses and, and now a trucking company. And to me, it is more about the product when it comes down to it and the services. In the medical field, you, you you handling services for elderly people who need those services. And you helping other people get jobs and providing jobs for them. The service and the product should always be what's most important. Yes, black owned is important too. And I say black owned a lot because we need more of us in a community to own our own businesses. You know, like it, it, I don't, well, you're probably not black, Albert, but in our community, we know what's needed. <laughs> you, I'm being honest, probably not black, but in our community, we know what's needed and we know why we hurting. And that's why we hurting. A lot of us out here are not entrepreneurs and owners. We like to say it. Oh, we was talking about that last week. I'm a boss check. I'm a boss, blah, 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 boss. But really ain't no boss. You don't got employees. You don't. You don't own your own businesses. You know. You 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 not even making minimum wage with what you're doing. So you're not a boss. You know. We need real entrepreneurs and business owners out here because that's what's gonna help the community grow. The more people you putting on and showing direction on how to build their own, the 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 better the community grows. But um, so black owned is important, but uh, that is not the main thing that we want individuals to value. Just that part. The product and the services is always the most important because if that's not right, nothing is right with the business. But thank you for the comment. Shirley Bedell, through all that pain, still got a million dollar smile. Okay. God bless you. Oh, Louie, because we, well, you talked about that quick. Yeah, yeah, Shirley Bedell. You talked about, we haven't even talked about that situation yet. You know what I'm saying? Pamela Aleman. I don't mind supporting black owned businesses as long as their products and services are good. Yeah, that's I mean, that's what it's about, you know, and when I'm when I'm saying that, of course, that's what it's about. I'm just saying more people in the community need to need to really be about building their own and starting their own, you know. But yes, whatever you building and starting, you better make sure that the product is something that people want to be a part of. One hundred. But yes. Yes. That's important. You know, Um Jesse Shelley, Cam slung him, and his hat never wavered. That's a fact. <laughs> if you watch the video, his hat. Uh, this dude, sometimes I'll be thinking yeah. that this dude got his hat like, glued to his yeah, head. I was about to say. I was you know say what I'm saying? Thing. Because that dude had don't That's go crazy. nowhere when he put it on his head. Helen Roy. I remember a few years ago, some snot-nosed kid called Cam Newton trash. Really? Yeah, I remember that. That was one of the um, events he held. Um, like, what have you ever even accomplished? The level of disrespect from folks these days is unreal. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, Cam has been disrespected. It's weird because the dude was one of the best players in the NFL as a quarterback, which is the hardest position to play. I don't understand why Cam get the d type of disrespect he do, but he, but he, but he have got it. Uh, scoring a healthy, it really does blow my mind. Somebody who has lived your dream comes to be your audience at a seven on seven. And you disrespect him. You trying to get where he been. Show some respect. So yeah, that's what he be having at these events. Like it'd be like seven on seven flag football games oh, and stuff okay. like yeah, that. Yeah. You know. So uh, so yeah. You know, I, I'm with you on that. Uh, Scoring a healthy, but where's all into as gang members? Hey man, if the stream dead worked, I would have pressed it. I gotta get this right. <laughs> but that's right. That show Scoring a healthy, you really a part of what's going on here, and we appreciate you, man. Because we know when it come down to it, even though we had hundred k, we still know that this podcast is still growing. So we appreciate that. Sherry Helen, what do you think of Tay K's current legal situation? Well, we mentioned it, man. I mean, you know, hey, don't don't take. Don't take the deal, you know, whatever it is, you know. Um, let me speak a little bit, Francis, before <laughs> you're going quick. Let me speak good for five seconds. But when it come down to it, um, yeah, don't take the deal, you know, keep it pushing, you know, um, because you already got 55 years, you know, the next after that is what life, you know, unless they run in it concurrent. If they said 55 concurrently, then hey, slap it on me, you know, because I already got 55 anyways. But if they said, right. Uh, uh, another uh, 50, 55 uh, on top of the 55 you got? No, I'm, what, am I, what am I gonna take that for? What, I'm, I'm, I, for what? You know, um, but hey, uh, shout, you know, uh, none but respect to the, to the victims of the situation, man. I'm not saying that to say take K. I'm just saying in his situation, what I would do, I'm not, I never would do what he did, but if I was in that position, I'm not taking no deal unless is uh, the, the years are running concurrently, period. All right, uh, Albert Canem, 
The unprofessional is not a stereotype. Some black owned businesses are extremely unprofessional. Um, I mean, it's a lot. Every culture have businesses that are extremely unprofessional. Half of the businesses, sometimes you go into Beverly Hills and Brentwood as a black person, they looking at you crazy trying to hurry up and get you up out of there. So, I mean, it's a lot of unprofessional businesses. Um, Albert Canem, no disrespect, but do you go and look on YouTube and look at what a lot of black people and other cultures that come from um, um, communities that people may label as low class, do you not see how they get treated in some of these communities where it's exactly. primarily They're white? More professional than we are. <laughs> you know, and not just white, uh, Korean or, 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 or yeah. uh, whatever. So I'm just saying, like, you know, uh, they more, you're right, I'm more unprofessional. They are. Then when it comes down to that, so um, if you want to talk about the unprofessional side of businesses, that's every culture. And, and in fact, it's it's more in other cultures. I want to let y'all know something. When it comes down to, this is where I would stand on when it comes down to black individuals. We know when we do run something, business or, or got our own, that if we don't do it perfectly, it's going to get shut down really quick. We nice. don't get second, third, and fourth opportunities to, to keep something rolling. When it comes down to black owners and black businessmen and black uh, businesswomen, we don't get opportunity after opportunity like some of these other cultures and communities. So when it comes down to it, you see less unprofessionalism when you do have individuals that are in a black community that have built something. And you see more from these communities that think that the world runs around them and they could do whatever they want to do. So, um, you know, no disrespect, but your statement is kind of off. But I do appreciate you for commenting, though. Thank you. Spy, yo, what's yo, what's with Diddy and Meek Mill drama? Uh, you know, we kind of, you know, spoke on it a little bit, you know. <laughs> uh, now, what, what they was doing, I, I have no idea. I don't know. You know, uh, maybe read more of the lawsuit um, by Lil Rod, man. You can find out more. Uh, Juliet Hanna, uh, but appreciate the comment, though. Juliet Hanna, imagine how mad you'd be if you were an up-and-coming rapper and on the day you dropped the biggest smash hit of your life, you got locked up for 55 years. Don't kill people, kids. Well, actually, he was on the run when he put that song out. So they was already looking for him. That's why the song is called The Race. So it wasn't like he did the song and then, you know, the the the, the murder happened and then he put out the and then he, he was on a run after he already blew up. No, he blew up on the run because he put the song out after he did what he did. And, you know, basically, you know, was on a run, you know. So that's why the song, again, is called The Race. So, yeah. Jenna Disforgus. I want to support black-owned businesses, but many black-owned businesses overcharge for their product and services and lack good customer services. What's wrong with these individuals, man? I'm sorry. You know what? And some of y'all individuals who write on here all the time. I'm like, what? what? Yeah. Give an example. You know, when you look on overcharge. YouTube and you look at these businesses, most of these businesses where you see bad services were handled are the ones that you see where other communities are getting treated like dirt, getting treated like crap, getting treated like they some bums going up in there. And they the ones who basically giving you the service. We see what happened in a lot of these um, um, Asian um, um, hair product stores and, and nail and, 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 and feet, you know, salons and everything like that. We see what happened. You know, a lot of the black women was treated like trash and, and they had one situation where a, a bunch of, um, you know, black dudes went up there and confronted the Asian dude who was slapping and pushing the black women that were going in there, paying their hard earned money. So I'm just saying, when we talking about stuff like that, that's what we can't do. Cause we see that in other communities on another level when it come down to stuff like that. So the unprofessionalism and, and, and bad product and services, like I said, I don't really get that part. I'm just basically trying to say, I want to see more of us start our own businesses and everything like that. And I feel like, oh. No, no, you good, say, bro, you good. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like if we did overcharge, so what? They all do it. The other races do it. Oh, my they God. They overcharge, go to Beverly Hills, go off of Melrose, go, go all these white neighborhoods. They do the same thing. They overcharge. Way over the You know charged. what I'm saying? So I, mean, I, yeah. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we want to overcharge. I mean, I'm not saying we really, that's what we, they got to prove that. But I'm just trying to say, if it is, that if that is going on, then why not if the, the other races do it? But hold up too. Well, you know, when you go to a to a shop, a swap meet or shop or whatever in the hood and a black person on a bit, they selling the that stuff anyway. half off. It's, off. it's for the low low. Exactly. It's for the straight for the low low. low. Anyway. That's why I said she had to prove that. But yeah. I'm saying if we did, they overcharge. I mean, yeah. go to Beverly Hills, go off of Melrose. 
Come I don't on. know where she be shopping. At. Yeah, I definitely. You know, <laughs> I don't have no clue. But that's what I'm saying. You know, we can't it, with if we're gonna say stuff like that, we gotta show facts. Yeah. Attach a website or something that we could look up what you're talking about or, or a link. I don't know, but we got to see facts behind that stuff. Helen Roy, prayers up for this brother, a true blessing to still be here and able to share his situation. Um, who are we talking about? Uh, probably Cam Newton. Yeah. You said what, Francis? Oh, Bow Wow. Hey, okay, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah Bow Wow. Yeah, wow. You're right, you're right. Little Bow Wow. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to Bow, man. Definitely for, for sharing his story. For real, for real. Amarachi, hey, look who in the building, hey. Always fresh. You, know? <laughs> you gonna, always you, fresh. You're going you to be uh, coming back for cancel culture soon? <laughs> oh, y'all fresh. You, you already know it. We got to stay fresh all day, every day. You know, we don't play. You know how it is. Come on. Come on, Queen. Yeah, uh, yeah, that lifestyle is running wild. Wow, Meek Mills. What? <laughs> yeah, Meek Mills is trash. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot going on, you know, in that industry. You know, you already know, Queen. You already know. G uh, Galani Z, that's crazy. A lot of black-owned businesses I tried to support were overpriced. And the what other, the, the customers. Okay, so now what are y'all doing? Looking at what the next person writing? Y'all writing the same stuff? Oh, my God. Like, like y'all got to give Why some examples. I'm, I I don't, look, I'm, I'm, look if, it was, if this was a fact, I would state it. I would say it. I'm a black man, and I've shopped at a lot of black-owned businesses. That's where you get stuff for the low low. Thank you. The low low. <laughs> you know on. what I'm saying? If I want to spend a bag on something, I'm going to Beverly Hills. Exactly. I'm going to West LA. I'm going to the Beverly Center. I'm going to where we don't own nothing over there. You know what I'm saying? If I want to spend something on a high tip, if, but if I want to spend on a low low, that's to where go you going to the black owned business. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are y'all talking about? Can y'all explain what y'all talking about? Go shopping in Paris and see how much y'all gonna spend on a shirt. <laughs> on <Man>. some pills. <laughs> oh, Let's make some sense. To the hood. Jesse Shelley. Well, we already read it this. really does blow my mind. Somebody who has lived your dream come to Yeah, we read this, Francis. Come on, Francis. You know what you what you back there doing, man? What's going on? All right, Sherry Helen. Tay K would put would pull a Glock in a snowball fight. Uh yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know him personally, so I don't know what really, he, what he really do, except for what we saw with the charges. But yeah, mm -hmm. Arthur Wall, <laughs> we appreciate it, Sherry. You're always writing something, so we appreciate that that you you support and you write stuff, and you know every show you hear writing something. So thank you, we do appreciate you though. But but I I I, I didn't understand that one. <laughs> Arthur Wall, I'm a champion. Oh, I can't hilarious. be stopped, and I'm never gonna fight. Every, uh, no, I just have to. <laughs> Okay, at least we know you uh, look at the intro, you know? So, hey, appreciate you, Arthur, for looking at the intro, brother. You know what I'm saying? Arthur Wall, they don't respect our businesses at all. I'm clearly seeing that. I now. mean, we see that. That's a fact. <laughs> Man, we see, why, hey, we, we see why we go through a lot trying to build businesses, bro, in our community, man. Dang. A lot. We see how, hey, the, the thing that I do respect when it comes down to podcasts is that when people comment, we know they being overly real with what they really yeah. feel right yeah. so today we was able to show how people feel about black businesses yeah. rather it's true or not just because it's black businesses right yeah. so we got to see that so we know now in our community when we know that we're not building 100 million dollar businesses and 500 fortune companies and we working our butts off even harder than these other communities we see why we this is the way people look at us you know what I'm saying? So, hey, I, I appreciate everybody who commented. I appreciate it. But it's just, I'm just saying, if you're going to comment stuff like that, show the proof. But I already know that, I mean, I'm black, so I'm telling you straight up, you ain't going to really show too much proof. <laughs> because we charging the least. That's a fact. Facts. You know? All right, cool, cool. Man, appreciate everybody who participated in the comments. Um. Yeah, yeah, I was going to, I'm not going to really go into detail, but yeah, I, I showed you the picture the other day. You know, we did have, we, you know, I just want to say, you know, uh, 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 what is it? King Louis, uh, old block, um, King Louis old block. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just want to say in regards to him, you know, really quick, um, you know, he showed himself in a suit and, and how his head was like halfway cut open, uh, because of the surgery he had done. Cause he was shot when yeah. King Von, you know, if people don't know King, uh, Louis from old block 
was one of the individuals that was a part of the shooting when King Von was shot, killed. And he got shot in the head at that particular time. Um, you know, uh, I just want to say, you know, because we did see a video or a picture of him, you know, and everything. And I just want to say, thank God the dude is alive. Um, you know, I, uh, my bad on the picture part, Francis. I forgot to show a picture. But if people don't, um, if people don't, Ha, uh, have not seen a picture of King Louis. Just just type in Louis from Old Block on YouTube and just look at you know what he survived through. Look at the surgery that the dude. It literally looked like a fraction of his head is chopped off, and he lived through that. You know, so shout out to him for still being alive, man. You know, uh, you know he get another opportunity to be here and turn his life around. Maybe get to show others the direction to go in. And, and, and changes his life if he wasn't a safe man you know and everything like that changed his life to have an opportunity to make it up there into heaven gates if he wasn't in that position at that time yet so i don't care as long as you get to have your your right mind and live through it be thankful for that especially if you was not in the right place before that happened because you got an opportunity to make it right with god make it right with yourself and maybe help some others along the way. So uh, shout out to King Louis. I also I had a video, man, that I was gonna play in regards to Joe Biden, man. But I, I, I'm going on in. Uh, you know what? Fling it. We gonna play it really quick, and then we gonna get out of here. We are. I, I, it's. I'm about to play this video, right? Of Joe Biden, basically. Um, you know, Joe Biden. He went to go visit a, a, a black family, um, a, a father and his boys, and everything like that, and um. I want y'all to see this video and tell me if y'all think something is wrong with this. We're just going to play a couple of quick minutes and then we're just going to talk. And I just want to see because as soon as I saw this video or something that I noticed that I'm like, man, this freaking stereotype. But but I'm not going to say too much. Let's just play a couple of minutes of the video really quick, Francis. Today, I think that one did. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. This is Brawl. Please excuse Carter for his absence today. I needed his advice, so we had lunch together. Francis. Oh, okay, no, you good, you good. Here's your food, Mr. President. It's a pleasure serving you. Oh, all right, man. This is a very unique day, a very special day. Dude, we got to eat dinner with Joe Biden. That's fire, like, the president's coming. Thank you, Thank you man. Thank you, sir. Thank it's you. a face. Couldn't really believe that the president was coming to our house. appreciate you coming to him. Come on, man. This is a pain in the neck for you. Uh, this is all great. So what we would like to do is just come into our, our space, our living area. All right. Well, Carter, you have, you want to show President Biden uh, one of your pictures up here? You want to share? Go over this side and show President Biden one of your favorite pictures on the wall. Well, one of my favorites is this one right here. Well, we were in Oh, Jamaica. that's cool. Oh, man, you got chicken fingers. You got, you got the whole deal. <laughs> oh, I want the root of making sure I had the humor of it. So tell me about you guys. What you doing these days? Why don't you share about your passion of sports? I'm playing AAU basketball right now. All right, let's go on and pause it really quick, Francis. Yes, sir. All right, so... Uh, uh, do, I I want to see maybe I gotta explain it, but did you notice something weird about that that video? That's a lot that was weird. About where that where was something that you noticed as as a as a as a black? I mean, man. you probably gonna say something different, but I mean, I also noticed that it looked like he wanted to get the hell up out of there. <laughs> it looked like he really didn't even care. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just the facial expressions, the way he's talking, the way he's just not even asking the question. He's waiting for them. Yeah, the engagement, like everything just looked like he's just doing it just to get it out the way to make it so people can think something that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I seen just, I don't really think he really had his heart into that situation, bro. Just, just, just to put that out there, man, how I felt about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, and all of that is true, but it's one thing specifically about that Joe Biden clip. That threw me off, and, and 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 it just showed me the same old stereotype that we always go through as black people. Sports? No, no, no. I have 
not sports. The stereotype was thinking that all black people won't fry chicken. Oh. He went and got some fried chicken strips. Uh, it's like we have we're about to have dinner. I'm having dinner with the president, and you go get some fried chicken strips. Uh, Fr- I thought the family got fried that. chicken. No, oh, you didn't see so he fine. was he was at the restaurant. You, you didn't see he was at the fast food place. Oh, he was getting the food. Yeah, yeah, he brought fried chicken to my house as a black man and black kids. Why we always gotta have fried chicken? Why, bro? That's the first thing I thought about when I saw that video. I said, why even the the white president? It's going to bring fried chicken to my house for dinner. I want to eat something good. I like Asian food. I like Persian food. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I like I like Mexican food. Why we got to have fried chicken? You get what I'm saying? If you could bring some sushi. I eat a little sushi too. Why you got to bring fried chicken? Why you, you went and got the $5.99 special? You feel what I'm saying? Like, are you serious? I didn't notice that part. Like, like you were yeah. putting this on national TV. That you were having dinner with my 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 black kids and me as a black father, and you went and got us the five ninety nine special of fried chicken and fries. Are you kidding me, bro? Off of that alone, I'm sending straight out. I don't care what nobody say. I will never ever vote for Joe Biden again, never, yeah. ever. And I hope that Trump and the Republicans use that. I really do. I hope they use and abuse that clip. Right. You really went and got fried chicken bro. and brought it to my house when you know the stereotype. Are you serious? Hey, bro, I ain't gonna, for real? I ain't gonna lie, to you. huh? Fried chicken, bro? <laughs> what? Fried chicken, my nigga? And then he went to a fast food restaurant. You could at least went to M and M's or something. You know, uh, Roscoe's, whatever. You went to a fast food restaurant and brought this nigga really at the driveway at Cheddar's or something. I don't know Checkers. I don't know where yet. And got some fried chicken and some fries, my nigga. And came and sat at my house. You the president of the United States. You get anything on this planet you want. And you got some Checkers fried chicken and fries. That is cold-blooded. Bro, I will never vote for Joe Biden again, bro. It's like he know nothing about our community don't understand it but we sit here just because we feel we democrats and vote for people like this i'd rather have left trump in office and say at least our businesses are good at least we getting bread at least we out here making something happen because he's making sure money's in the community you know the trucking industry is up the medical industry is up the gas is low everything looking good on the financial side yeah he may be a little bit all right i don't know but joe biden looked like he don't understand nothing when it come down to us he looked like he don't give a damn like you say he was unengaged and he brought fried chicken to my house are we out of our minds thinking that because we democrats let's just vote for joe biden bro i'm all for him straight up i don't care how nobody feel i don't care what nobody say i'm all for joe biden straight up bro forever hey, bro, i ain't gonna lie forever bro that was terrible bro you definitely right about that but i ain't gonna lie when i was watching it i did want some fried chicken <laughs> I looked at that food like, damn. But you're right. No, I'm just trying to say, but I did. Stare, the thing about chicken, it is stereotype. Yeah, I'll probably go home and eat me a little fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the stereotype. <laughs> it's the stereotype that's that matters. It's like you bring a fried true. chicken in my house. <laughs> Arthur, well, I'm surprised he didn't get watermelon. Facts, man. I know. You know what I'm saying? Watermelon. It, it, you know what I'm saying? It's some Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. I'm surprised. Oh, I I, I'm surprised you didn't bring the packets. Like, hey, you got you got a you got a container for us to throw this, <laughs> you know, make the Kool-Aid. You got some sugar too. Why you didn't bring the hot sauce? You didn't do that exactly. Hot sauce, <laughs> well, you, you know, sauce. everything, man. It's like, are you stra- exactly straight disrespect? <laughs> straight disrespect, bro. Like, come on, are you kidding me? Oh, Makes no shit. sense at all, man. So that's what I'm saying. Hey, I'm sorry. I know the last election, and I heard this from a lot of the dudes who I knew were in relationships and married. A lot of the dudes voted for Joe Biden because they said they women work, they girls work. Because a lot of the black women, I'm not going to lie, voted for Joe Biden. So a lot of men were saying, yeah, my woman, she want me to vote for woo woo. I hope a lot of black men this time are standing up and saying, no, I'm done. I'm not voting for Joe Biden. I'm not voting for no Democrat. This dude is just as bad. race When it comes down to racist issues... He's just as bad as the rest of them. So let me now vote for what can at least help me build and grow when it comes down to being a person on this earth financially. And all. And let me look at other things. And really, when it comes down to that, they can't beat Trump. They can't beat the Republicans. The Republicans make things happen financially out here when you out here making something happen. So I'm sorry. Hey, I'm done with Democrats. I'm done with Joe Biden. That's a wrap.
for me when it come to that. So it is what it is. Yeah. Anything else to say about this, bro? I ain't gonna lie, I'd have been nervous all them white people come to my house. I ain't gonna lie. I'd have, <laughs> I'd have, like, I would I'd be just waiting for it to be over, like shit. And bring some fried them chicken. Let me get out of here. Crazy. Yeah, man. bring some fried chicken. That's crazy. I would have towed up though, but uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna eat. Don't... <laughs> I'm gonna eat, my nigga. But I'm not voting for him after that. I'm gonna eat though. If I was there, I'm gonna eat too. I'm hungry. You come here and with Joe, I'm gonna eat. When I'm gonna talk right, about you right. afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shoot, you know. So hey, it is what it is. But uh, any last words, bro? Hey, thank you everybody for tuning in, watching Nothing to Some podcast. You feel me? We always keep it real. We always keep it lit. And uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? JY one more too. My bad. JY one more. Uh that's my Instagram. Check me out. Hey. That's about it, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, love you all. Hey. Everybody who watched the show and, and commented and, and, and maybe checking us out, hey, let other people know about the show. Like I say, we we moving to another level now. We over hundred K. We trying to take this to a whole nother level. And you know that, you know, we got we got we got the 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 right people at the table who could give a show and, and bring the topics and, and and bring certain things to the table that people need to hear and stuff we could talk about and enjoy with each other. You know that that's what you get here. So let other people know about the show. Let's make this big. Hey, everybody's a part of it now. Hey, this is this is this this is ours. We all a part of this. You know, everybody watching. This is like I said. This is the one platform. It's not like other ones. This is for all of us. You know what I'm saying? So hey, let's just keep on building and growing. It's your boy Paul P. Francis in the back. J Y. We love you all. We out of here. Yes, Deuces. Sir. Deuces. <laughs> Up in the ring, my eye on the mission At 11 years old, this right here was my vision Make it to the top, catch everyone's attention The haters, they can hate as long as they listen To the words that I say as my tongue keeps